hello, uh, welcome to This Date in History, a.k.a. TDH. Uh, this show is all about the events that occurred to date in years past, both recognized by other historians, but mainly things we personally uh, find intriguing enough for us to bring to you. The sources of this information come from the Smart Device application, Today in History, What Happened Today in History, Historical Calendar, and the website on onthisday.com. For links to those sources, the music done by Carrera, and anything else potentially interesting, check the underbar in the description below. Anyway, I am A.O. Xander, and today I am joined by... The Slayer. And Proto Blob. Yep, the uh, Big Fist and Good Job Blob. Uh, today is January 1st, 2023. Happy New Year. How's everyone's year? Happy New Year. My year so far so Happy good. Happy New Year. You know? Very quick year. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, let's jump into the history, shall we? And, uh, Bredos, do you want to start us off here in the uh, 153 BC? You there? In the year 153. Yes, yes, I am. In the year 153 BC, Roman consuls began their year in office. Ah. And uh, I see that. Okay, there we go. My connection uh, is a little wibbly wobbly there. Um, all right. And uh, today's show is going to be a, a rather long show, so uh, hold tight and get ready for an awesome ride here. Yes. 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 Do continue on, good sir. Uh, in the year 45 BC, the Julian calendar takes effect for the first time. Ah, yes. Nice. And as we know, the Julian calendar is uh, made by Julius Caesar. So, but we uh, mm -hmm. we finally have... Golden Moon. There we go. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Cool. Sit in for a bit. Yeah, better late than never. So, yeah. And I don't think you're going to be able to, to sustain the whole show because we have a lot of stuff here. Oh, yeah? So, oh, wow. I'll be here for some of it. Yeah. I'll be in and out. All right. Uh, we got a third article for you, Mr. Brados, in the year one. Which is, uh, we're not talking about the movie. In, we're talking about the actual time. <laughs> in, the fir in the first year of the 2023 years currently the, was the origin of the Christian era. Yep. Which means nothing else than that it was the first year of the current calendar. Hmm. We're going to uh, move on to Mr. Blob here. You got one in 104. All right. In the year 104, we have uh, the triumphal procession for the Roman general Gaius Marius. <clears throat> With the defeated Numidian king Jugurtha led in James through Rome. Oh, that's not very nice. That's not. That's not very pog champ. Yeah. <laughs> like, look at my victory. Yeah. Like, you know, whatever. Yeah, that, that's like, hey, before, look at this guy that I beat. <laughs> that's before they had new services and everything, so the king had to show up personally to uh, have other people believe he's defeated. Yep. This guy really went, ha, huh, get beat. Anyway, we, we talked about his death yesterday. Guess who's back now? In 177, Commodus, uh, son, uh, the son of Emperor Marcus Aurelius, becomes consul for the first time at 15 years old, then the youngest ever in uh, human history. Roman. Yeah. Roman history, yes. Mm -hmm. And he died in 192 on the uh, 31st of December. So that's uh, very interesting. He started the year, uh, he started his political career at the 1st of January and he ended at the 31st of December. Yeah, yeah mm. like many years later. Yeah. Wow. So, but yeah, I think, uh, isn't, aren't these the people from uh, the movie Gladiator, the characters at least? It sounds familiar. Um, Marcus Aurelius. Yeah, in, yeah, Marcus in, Aurelius was the emperor three. who died and then the, the, the. Yeah. Uh, Actually, in the year 404, the last gladiator competition was held in Rome. Oh, ah. so when's that long? Hmm. Wow, that's a couple hundred years. 404, 404 gladiators not found. Hmm. Yeah, 404. Uh, you got another one here in uh, 990 talking about uh, calendars. Yes, uh, Russia adopts the Julian calendar. Yep. So, uh... 
let's see here. The the we were talking about the Julian calendar. Uh, so at 45 BC, and then 990. So that's uh, that's uh, what's 990 plus 45 is what 135 years later. I was listening to math. Uh, uh, so like uh, the Julian calendar first came into effect in 45, 45 BC. Yeah. And then in the year 990, it uh, took effect in Russia. Russia adopted the Julian calendar. So oh, a, a thousand, yeah, not a hundred. So a thousand forty-four years later. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a wild. Uh, no, that's a, a thousand and uh, thirty-four. Thirty-five. Yeah. Thirty-five. Yeah. Where did, where did the four come from? Why are you screwing me up here? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, just because I can. <laughs> Happy New Year! I'm uh, back! I'm clearly not completely uh, I, uh, recovered from last night. Well, I just did a quick... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just yeah, but like, out, my guy did not recover. Out, I didn't get exact. You're a broken calculator. So, yeah. <laughs> News report on Xander. Yeah, he has not recovered from last night. <laughs> he may never. <laughs> no, I, I, still he out. never recovered. <laughs> He this, never recovered. This, this affects me for the rest of my life. His recovery is not the norm. He doesn't, he doesn't get to that point. No. <laughs> oh my. Anyway, we're going to move on up into 1504. French King Louis the Twelfth lose or lost uh, the last bulwark in Naples, uh, Cadia. So I, I, I guess like um, what the heck did that mean? like a bulwark. So I guess a defense or whatever. Yeah, I have no idea. What bulwark is. Yes, it's a. Uh, a bulwark is a kind of a fortification, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's, it was his last last thread, and then he completely lost uh, Naples. Yeah, so. his last mm. stand. Yep. We got another historic event here. In the year 1515, France Duke of uh, Angoulême succeeded King Louis XII as Francis I of France. Okay. We, yeah, we, uh, a bulwark is a bastion. I'm sorry? A bulwark is a bastion. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, like, do you have a link? Uh, we'll post that in the underbar of the description uh, at some point. So, if you find All one. All right. Uh, but we have another one here in 1573. Uh, Goizen set fire to Waldrichheim. And what is that? Yeah. It. Uh, if we don't know what it is, it is likely cricket, but not today. It's the <laughs> the, the Goizen. That, the Goisen is the largely Calvinist Dutch guerrilla and privateering forces whose military actions initiated the Netherlands revolt against Spanish rule from 1568 to 1609. And uh, that's according to Encyclopedia Britannica. Okay. And Wittenkem is a city and former municipality in North Brabant, Netherlands. Uh, so the Spanish were occupying there and then they just burnt down the city in, in rebellion. It's At a... The guerrilla uh, set fire to the city. Yeah. All right. I think uh, we are uh, back at you with uh, more calendar updates here. Mm. Mr. Brados, please. Oh, Brados? Okay. I, I thought it was. Yeah, yeah, it is Brados. Sorry, I'm sorry, Brados. My my brain's not. Oh, you're good. <laughs> sorry. In 1583, the first day of the Gregorian calendar in Holland and Flanders. Ah, oh, well, look at that. So going from the Julian to the Gregorian. Yeah. So already. What is what is Ned Flanders? What the heck is Ned Flanders doing there? <laughs> I, I'm trying to convert people to Christianity, like he always. Said. I diddly do, neighbor. <laughs> I diddly do, neighborino. <laughs> or to the Gregorian. Yeah, hey, Flanders. We got another one ah. here in uh, 1600, even. In the year 1600, Scotland begins its numbered year on January 1 instead of 25 March. Oh, that's interesting. So, uh, obviously, they were switching to some other calendar or something. I don't know. They just started... uh, They started the year at uh, the 1st of January, then, instead of the 25th of March. Uh, Yeah, the uh, January 1-ist instead of 25th-ist. Yeah. (laughs) 20 fist. 20 f- big 20 fist. Number 20. <laughs> In the year 1622, Papal Chancery adopts January Jan 1 
Oneist. One once. <laughs> Jin once as beginning of the year was March twenty fifth. Mar right. Mars Mar twenty five. We so want to like... apologize. Uh, we didn't give Bratus his oats today. Yeah. Well, first off, I was so prepared to say, "Oh, four hundred years ago," but no, not anymore. I can't do that. Yeah, four hundred and one years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then also I'm seeing that like uh, so whatever was going on the 25th of March uh, the Papal Chancery was doing the same thing as Scotland so maybe maybe Scott maybe that's some kind of like Papal well Gregorian calendar was a Pope calendar so maybe they're uh, that's confusing huh well I don't know I'm trying to figure out because like they both they, they both started the 25th of March it looks like right here yeah the 25th of March was uh, actually when the year used to start, uh, oh, okay. but there were, there were only 10 months then. Oh. And uh, that was that was in, uh, it was celebrated during the time of the vernal equinox in Mesopotamia at around 2000 BC. And uh, that apparently was adopted um, uh, in many, um, what is it called, uh, places. Uh, yeah, so it sounds like this is an update of the Gregorian calendar then. It used to start on March 25th. I haven't looked into that. Oh, the Mesopotamian, not oh. the Gregorian. Okay. Yeah. I put a, a research channel so you can put it in the underbar. So that, yes. that particular year, the 25th of March, lined up with January 1. That's why the 25th, didn't it? Okay. The year before it was probably something else. Okay. A different day. It All wouldn't right. have lined up every year. That's very confusing. <laughs> I'm no, glad, I'm glad we don't have to deal with that. It's already been done. So. No, it was the March 25th. It was the beginning of the year, and then they changed it to the January 1st. Right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Anywho. In 1651, uh, Charles II Stuart crowned King of Scotland. Oh. And as you know, the current King of uh, the United Kingdom is uh, Charles III. All right. So, in 1660, the first entry in English uh, civil sermon, I, no, in English civil servant Samuel Pepys diary. Ah, oh, so it's a, the first entry in his diary. That could have been worded a lot better. The first entry in the diary of English civil servant Samuel Pepe. Pepe's. Yeah. Pepe. Pepe's. Yes. Ah. Pepe. Pepitos. He had. He, he chronicled the Great Plague of London, the Second Dutch War, and the Great Fire of London. Oh, damn. And also was member of Parliament and Navy Administrator. That's a lot of stuff to be in control of. Busy guy. Mm -hmm. Yes. And in sex. 1672 we have uh, Jean Racine's by oh my god I cannot uh, say that <laughs> Jean, Jean Racine's Bajazé premieres in Paris or, so, or something like that we got the Jean part really good yeah well that's the only part I uh, know how to pronounce <laughs> We also have, uh, one year later, in 1673, on the 1st of January, regular mail delivery began between New York and Boston. Well, look at that. Yeah. Start getting a regular mail. That's pretty cool. Yeah. They're still late. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. Boston did something useful. <laughs> two of, two Every of dog has a stake, you know. Yeah, two of, two of those three things uh, still exist, by the way. New York and Boston. But regular mail delivery doesn't. Oh. Uh, Oh, that's unfortunate. Mail, mail never rests. So it was a joke. Because the mail always re uh, was, is delivered irregularly. Ah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then in uh, 1700, not... Protestant Western Europe, except England, began using the Gregorian calendar. So there we go. So more usage of... Because yeah. you know, like, when you think about it, like, you know, there's been so many civilizations, so many cultures, so many different, you know, like, different things of measuring things. Like, you know, like, even today we have, like, the great battle of, of uh, metric versus imperial. Yeah. And really, the world should be using metric. We already have unified time, numbers, you know. 
uh, we still have, you know, like, as I say, you know, metrics for distances, so miles and versus kilometers and stuff like that. But the very aspect of, you know, a unified calendar for the most part is astonishing. The whole world, you know, like, because, like, and that's what allows the world to go around is our ability to communicate, not necessarily in language, but in logistics, you know? Well, some yes. in the Middle East are still using a different type of calendar. Like well, yeah, you know, there's still those the that Muslims, are going around. Yeah, you know, well, the Chinese, they have their own New Year and all that yeah, stuff. So, yeah. you know, there's still other things. But as far as, like, you know, something everybody uses, we have that now. Yeah. Like, other people, they do use other things, like, you know, as you just said. But this as is a unified thing. As long as your uh, social dominant, yeah. it lasts. If it doesn't, then your calendar won't last. Well, the fact that, well, it doesn't matter who's in control of the calendar. The fact that we have a unified calendar to unify the world. You know, is is you know, I yeah. find it really interesting. Yeah, really no, cool, it is. You know, I'm just saying, but you can lose that very quick. Oh yeah, so you can lose anything really quick. But, yes. But uh, speaking of uh, speaking of you know stuff like that in 1700 as well, uh, Russia began using the Anno Domini, the uh, AD uh, versus BC AD, you know, time era, and no longer uses the Anno Mundi era of the Byzantine Empire. So more calendar changes right there. So right there, yeah. AD BC. <laughs> And yeah, I know Monday was uh, the Rock calendar according to the biblical no. creation of the earth. Um, so in uh, Anno Monday, we would have the year 7,531 now. Okay, yeah. That's a, that's a pretty long time. So essentially, like, Christianity, as far as its impact on the timeline, was like a reset button. It just, like, reset yeah. the... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that the, the Byzantine calendar placed the date of uh, creation at 5,509 years before the incarnation of Jesus. Dang. And so on. Yeah. So, every few thousand years we need an update, you know. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. So, well, you got another one here, 1710. Or is it my turn? Mm -hmm. Um, is Bob there? I think Mr. Bratos is sleeping, so I'll take. Oh, I'm over. right here. Oh, I'm right here. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I completely forgot. I thought sorry, Bob, I just I sorry, I zoned out. My brain is sorry completely mush. What is wrong with me today? Uh, Bratos, no, 1710. In the year 1710, Paris merchant Jean Marius obtains a five-year royal privilege for his invention of a folding umbrella, Ooh. first in Europe. Nice. Huh. Yeah, convenient that makes thing. Sense. Like it took him that long in a rainy climate to finally invent the umbrella. Folding umbrella. Well, <laughs> the folding. Yeah, the foldable what's an, one. What's an unfolded umbrella? Like one that won't fold. <laughs> it's just a solid object. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know yeah, what I was expecting. You honestly. Know, like you put in your drink, you, know, you got that little umbrella. They don't fold. Yeah, they do. <laughs> oh my. Mm. Anywho. You got me, I got you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Mr. Blob. All right. So, in 1724, glassblower Daniel Gabriel Fahrenheit proposes a system for making thermometers and the Fahrenheit temperature scale in a paper to the Royal Society of London and is elected a fellow of its basis. Oh, cool. Well, yeah, but that will never take off. Yeah, there's a uh, reason we haven't at uh, least, unified. At least, at least not in Celsius. Percent. That goes along with what I was talking about, the metrics. Yeah. I was talking about, yeah. you know, like, uh, you know, inches to to, yeah. or to millimeters, yeah. miles to kilometers, yeah. Fahrenheit to Celsius. Yeah. You know, like, there's a lot of things that the world has yet to unify. And the U.S. is really, like, the only standout. Uh, North Korea is the only one that uses Imperial as well, to my knowledge. So, it's just yes. us and them. and. That kind of doesn't make us look in a good light, you know? Yeah. <laughs> All right. In 1739, Jean-Baptiste Charles Bouvet de Lossier discovers Bouvet Island near Antarctica. That's a heck of a name right there. <laughs> yeah. Bouvet. <laughs> Bouvet. But yeah, that's Bouvet cool. Island. Probably that's why he goes by JBC, because yeah. uh, nobody wants to speak his uh, long name. And in 1758, the International Commission on Zoological Nomen... Oh my god. Nomenclature? H how do you... 
I know what it means, but how do you go now? All right, establish the starting point for standardized species names across the animal kingdom based on the binomial nom... Uh, Nomenclature. Good. By Carolus Linnaeus, 10th edition of Systema Natural. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. It is. Oh. Wait. Yeah. We also have, uh, in 1722, the first traveler's chequoise, or wait, no, checks, go on sale <laughs> in London, can be used in 90 European cities. Yes. That is the origin of chequoise. Chequoise. Alice always says that. Yeah. That's the origin right there. Chequoise. Because because we spell check differently, you know, oh, check, yeah. Yeah. like traveler's checks and such, like, you know, these are the money yeah. checks. Yeah. So I read it just, you know, chequois, you know, yeah. I thought it was French and it's like, and I'm like, wait a minute, because because this, this, we, we did this last year with Alice, you know, like, as I said, this is where it comes from. So I looked it up and it was like London, but what is French word doing in London? Oh, it's check, like money yeah. check yeah. that can be used in 90 European <laughs> cities. So that makes more sense. And ever so, since then, that's uh, the, where the meme chequois comes from. So... That, that means the Jacquois was uh, invented exactly 250 years after the first traveler's check. I believe so. But 1772, yes. come on, the concept of traveler's checks, that's pretty early. Yeah. That surprises me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, three years later, in 1775, on January 1st, English potter Josiah or Josiah Wedgwood wrote that he has developed his famous Wedgwood blue color in a letter to Thomas Penley. I guess that's just a, like a faint, like a, a color hue. Let's uh, check this out here. Wedgwood blue images. So I guess yep. that's, oh, that's okay. It. Okay. Yeah, let's get a bigger picture. That is a pretty pleasing blue. So, yes. Yeah. That's Ooh. that whole yeah. style that has that. It's George Washington. Uh, I think. Yeah, it it's like... it's Gog. It's Gogi. <laughs> it's Gogethy Washington. <laughs> Gogethy Washington, Lord man. <laughs> Gogethy. Oh, speaking of Gogethy Washington. <laughs> speaking of this. the goat, here he is. Yes. <laughs> the goat himself. Look at that. George Washington put him on pottery. Yeah. Uh, 1776, General George Washington hoisted the Continental Union flag. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Huh? Yeah. The Union flag. Awesome. Uh, that doesn't look good. <laughs> Whoa. What doesn't look? That's the uh -oh. Grand Union flag. Continental Union. Hold on. 1776. Oh. Yeah, I don't think oh, we had... Oh, jeez. Um, well, I don't know. Maybe this was the original. Before the stars. Before... Well, got you the know. British in there. That's the British well, flag. Well, the Australia the flag still has it. Yeah. Like, um... That may be what they originally started with before they... Yeah, so yeah. so I guess yeah that makes sense because uh, this is well before the establishment of the United States before we had the you know stars representing the states we were not states we were colonies right you know we were right. we were separate city state individual countries under a union yeah, in so 76 we just declared it we were just going yeah. to war that's and, that's actually a great coincidence <laughs> because so, well I yeah guess, because go ahead yeah because as we will also speak about later on the show. Betsy Ross was also born on the 1st of January, who <laughs> actually oh, yeah. uh, it seems oh, yeah. that. Ah. That's going to be cool. I'm thinking that, like, so I'm trying to piece together the meaning of this flag. So, the, obviously, you know, the British thing would be, like, where we come from. Right. And then, of course, the stripes are the 13 colonies, as right. it remains right. today. Right. So, this would, I guess, represent us back in that time in right. you know, the most accurate way. So, it I, does, I've never seen that flag before. So yeah. Much. The with United the Union State. Jack, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. You, you think there would be like a more French thing than British, but I don't know. Whatever. Um, anyway, I think we're going back to uh, Bratos here. In the year 1781, 1,500 soldiers of the 6th Pennsylvania Regiment, under General Anthony Wayne's command, rebel against the Continental Army's winter camp in Morristown, New Jersey. As part of the Pennsylvania Continentals Regiment Mutiny of 1781. Uh, yeah, this was uh, because USW. The, the revolution ended in what? Uh, 1782? Like we said, uh, I believe. Yeah. So, uh, like, uh, there, like, I remember, and if you, you know, they talk about it in the movie The Patriot, uh, but uh, there was, like, uh, some problems with paying, you know, uh, paying the Continental Army soldiers and everything. They had a real hard time. Yeah, yeah. 
So like you know like it was it was a struggle beyond just like facing the the strongest military the world has ever seen at that time. You know it was pretty much down to like the only payment you'll get is the satisfaction of knowing that you're fighting for rights. Yeah, that pays the bills. That feeds my family. Yeah. You know, so really rough. You know, it really puts in perspective. Yeah. Like what we're going through today is pretty bad too. But you know. Back then, your chips are down. People got to get to it. Yeah. But anyway, um, Mr. Brados, you have another couple here. Hmm. In the year 1785, the Daily Universal Register, Times of London, publishes its first issue. Huh. So the London Times, or the Times of London, or whatever, uh, if they're still around. I think the London Times are still around. That sounds like a yeah, very oh, of big one. Yeah, of course it is. Yes. So the Makes first sense. Issue all the way back then, yeah. so dang. Dang there. Yeah. In 1788, London's Daily Universal Registrar becomes the Times. Well, look at that. So uh, just uh, three years later, they do a name change, a rebranding. Cool. It's on the same day. Yeah. Yeah, on the same yeah. day. Well, I mean, like, you know, as, as I said, you know, earlier, like, you know, today's show is going to be long because a lot of things, not just politically, but in ways you can't even fathom, come into effect, you know, on, um, you know, January 1st. Like, you know, like when I decided to start the whole project of doing the whole year long show, it's like, you know, when did you start it? Well, when's the best time? January 1st. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of like a fall on date, yeah. you know? So, uh, but anyway, Mr. Blob. All right, uh, we have another one in uh, 1797. Yes. Albany replaces New York City as capital of New York. That's interesting. So, in the year 1800, we have a big one. The Dutch East Indies Company dissolves. Good. Hmm. And one year later, in 1801, the dwarf planet Ceres is discovered by Italian monk Giuseppe Piazzi. Cool. So serious, isn't that uh, is isn't that either some uh, it's either a moon or isn't that one of the things in the asteroid belts? Yeah, Sirius. it's a dwarf planet. Dwarf planet. Let's hmm. see here. Yeah. Ceres. Uh, is a dwarf planet in the asteroid belt between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter? Yeah. So it's one of those. It's it's like um, it's like a protoplanet. You know. Right? Moon. So yeah, kind of looks like a moon. It is essentially like it's yeah. not, it's not a space station. It actually looks like our moon, but with less craters. Yeah, kind of. or with smaller craters. <laughs> oh. yeah, I wonder. Cool. Uh, I wonder how big it is compared to the moon. So, uh, but we don't really have time to do like a lot of digging and researching live on air. We got to we got to go. We have a lot of articles yeah. here. So indeed, indeed. Alrighty. Um, Blob, you got another one here in 1801 as well? Okay, uh, I did three, but oh, okay. I do this. So the uh, uh, Irish Parliament votes to join the Kingdom of Great Britain, forming the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland in 1801. Ah. Mm. Alright. I didn't know it was that recent. I would have thought that was back further. And actually, Evolution of Union Jack. It's really interesting uh, how their flag uh, changed. So, like, yeah. we have here the St. George's Cross, England, and then the St. Andrew's Cross, Scotland, merge those two to get the flag of Great Britain. And then you bring in uh, St. Patrick's Cross in Ireland, as we're saying here. We just said that. Yeah. So you see, boom, boom, boom. So yeah. three flags combined into one. There's a Union Jack. Yeah. So, yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Oh. Although the only thing I think would be, I know it would be a little overkill, but I think it'd be pretty cool if they added the Welsh dragon to the front, in front of all of it. No, you know what they should do? It weren't, huh? They should, they should have a small, like right dead center, of the Isle of Man, the three legs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but honestly, though, like, if it weren't for the Welsh, England wouldn't be where it is today. Because yeah. the Welsh made, they invented England. They're the reason that country exists. <laughs> Let's see, Welsh they are never, the Welsh are the original. They were the original British. Oh yeah, this so this flag. Well, that so would be very they British. They contributed a great deal to the Brits. Yeah, well, like that is very British yeah. right there. Yeah. So, 
And the thing that burns me is that the original Brit the current British do not acknowledge them as British. Wow. When they actually are the British. Those the guys you see there are not. Now They're just question. wannabes. Was that pun intended because we're talking about a dragon, the thing that burns you? <laughs> yeah, yes it was. <laughs> anyway, we also have in eighteen hundred four uh, Haiti gained independence from France National Day, making it the only state ever founded by former slaves and without slavery. That is cool. <laughs> go, go, Haiti. Hey. So, yeah. Go, go, Haiti. <laughs> and then uh, one year later, 1805, the world's first iron bridge opened to the public, crossing the Severn River at Cole Brookdale in England, regarded as a symbol of the Industrial Revolution. Hmm. Really cool deals here. So let's see, world's first iron bridge, 1805. So let's see here. Let's see if there's a picture or something of it, just to see. Oh, the iron bridge will definitely. Whoa, that's cool. Up. Yeah, look at that. So yeah, that's that's a cool bridge. It looks like a half. It looks like a looks like it's just built around a half circle. Yeah. See how like look at it. Like it looks like a half, half circle. Steel. Yeah. yeah. Big difference. Iron is so much weaker. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can oh, see yeah. like you know 100%. they have a whole bunch of structural supports yeah. and everything. Yeah. They like, have to have all that support. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. So this, this is the and if they don't, happened. it's just gonna break. Uh, is this a opened in 1781? Hmm. So, but I, well, it said public, so maybe this is like you know, maybe it used to be like for industrial use only, or something, like you know, to cross for like you know carriages. Possibly. Trains. I don't think trains were ex existed back then. You don't think so? Uh, in 1801 or 1805? I don't know. Uh. When were trains invented? Uh, railways existed as early as 1550. What? Yeah, but hmm. okay. The train. These pathways of wooden rails really. called wagonways were the beginning of modern rail transport, uh, making it easier for horse-drawn wagons or carts to move along dirt roads. Uh, but those are railways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when was the first invented train? 1804. <laughs> So, so no, those bridges wouldn't be before that. Well, it might have been because this this is one year after. Well, no, like not it's with the this. In, in, so maybe it was more for like the horses and such. Yeah. Then they, James, they opened it up James, to the public here. James Watt uh, patented the design for the steam locomotive in 1784, and the first full-scale working railway steam locomotive for the, was built in the United Kingdom in 1804. Oh dang! Oh, so they had to. Sweet. And uh, I'm going to take this 1806 one real quick. Uh, Napoleon Bonaparte abolished the French Republican calendar after 12 years of use. And it didn't this last is last long, did it? No. And he, he pretty soon, shortly after, he's going to start his uh, his little wars with all of Europe. He's going to start conquering and everything. So let me turn on a light here, so we're not completely in the darkness. I can't open my window because, you know, you can tell it's very bright. So. Anyway, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bratos, uh, yep. 1808, this one here. Ooh. Alrighty. In the year 1808, Congress prohibits importation of slaves. Good. Good. Yep. In the year 1818, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, or the modern Prometheus, is published anonymously by the small London publishing house of Lackington Hughes, Harding, Maver, and Jones. L H H M J. I haven't heard. So I wonder uh, if they're still around. Let me look that up. But yeah, that's pretty cool. So Frankenstein, Frankenstein. published. Yeah. Or, as it said, the modern Prometheus. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just saying Frankenstein. So I guess, I guess it, it doesn't still exist. I'm not getting a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so it looks like uh, the publishing company didn't didn't uh, didn't uh, last that long, but the book they published certainly did. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the book lasted forever. Still going. Yeah, yeah, it's still kicking. Yeah, it's a good story. Yeah. It's a very good read. Yeah. In the year eighteen eighteen, official reopening of the White House. This is after it was born, uh, burnt down during the War of 1812. Yep. Yeah, so. yeah. Yep. Yep. The war that we almost lost, but then we were just like, eh, I'm just gonna. 
we're, yeah. we're just gonna not lose. I mean, then again, in our defense, we didn't have a very big army at the time. We also, because we had really cut down the army size to focus well, more on our economy. We essentially dissolved it. Like, there was only, like, mm -hmm. you know, one, like, you know, like a company maybe left. Yeah. Like, we just had something, you know? But well, a lot of people well, went back to the colonies or states. Yeah. To have their yeah. own uh, militia. Militias, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's in the Constitution that they're still allowed to keep them. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one more, I believe. Anywho, in the year 1831, William Lloyd Garrison publishes the first issue of abolitionist journal The Liberator. Publication continued until the 13th Amendment abolished slavery in the year 1865. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. good. So he was publishing a constant journal against uh, slavery, and then eventually slavery was abolished. So. Yeah. That's good. Fight. Good. I mean, the book works. The book did its job. Yep. As did, you know, a lot, a lot of books have done their job. Like, uh, yes. Animal Farm yes. brought in the FDA. So. Whoa. Yeah. Mr. Blob. Yeah. In 1833, the British government demands the Falkland Islands. Huh. In we want the Falklands, give it to us. Give me a belt. Yeah. In 1834, the German uh, Customs Union goes into effect. And they used to uh, use a word here, Toluni, that uh, must be from some uh, very strange language, maybe Dutch. Totally. But that's not German and it's not English. Yeah, let me look it up here real quick, just for hee haws. German Toluni. Uh, Tulane University. Um. Oh, well, that's something else. Hold on. Yeah. Ah. Translation from Dutch to, into German. So I guess it's Dutch. Yeah. But you looked it up. You said it was a trade union? Uh, it's the German the, Customs Union, the Zollverein, uh, the, uh, for the import uh, uh, toll. Uh, w w what is it called in English? The customs, you know. Uh, tax? When you, when you import stuff. Oh, um, uh, importation tax? Not a tax. Well, he's not talking about a tax. He's talking about the bureaucracy. Uh, custom, custom, customs. Customs. Yeah. Yeah. The, well, that's cool. Uh, it, it was an economic union of the German states that lasted from 1834 to 1919. Uh, that was formed to manage tariffs and economic policies within their territories. Industrialization, you know, stuff well, like that. Tariffs were huge. Yeah, that, that's the only way we, the federal government ever made any money in the United States back then was through tariffs. Hmm. There was no personal taxes or anything like that on people. Maybe we should go back yeah. to that. It wouldn't hurt. And it as a um, interesting um, uh, history, I guess. Um, so we put it in the underbar. All right. Okay. All right. In uh, 1831, uh, no, 1838, that's what I tried to say. The first official hawk race in South Australia, Adelaide. So that's the uh, first official horse race ever in 1838. So, yes. Let me uh, double as check. As the first official horse race. Uh, uh, the France. Uh, the first documented horse race was held in 1651 as a result of a wager between two noblemen. So that's the first ever horse race, but this is the first officiated one. So the first one with an actual, like, structure and stuff around it. Right. So that's cool. Yeah. Leave it to Australia, right? Yeah, I'd still pick an egg. <laughs> we also hmm. have here in 1840 uh, the first recorded bowling match in the U.S., Knickerbocker Alleys in New York City. Ooh, bowling. Are you bowling. kidding? Bowling. Huh. About that, Steve, right? It's uh, never take me bowling. I don't, I don't like bowling. It, no. it makes me angry. <laughs> well, I'll bet you back then it was five pence, not ten. Hmm. Uh, how, how do you, how do you know this? Like, uh, I don't different? know it. I, I said I bet you. I'm not uh, sure at all, but I believe the original was uh, five pence, okay. smaller ball. No bowling. Uh, nine. Nine pence. Nine. 
Uh, in the early 1800s, a modern game of bowling with nine pins first appeared in the U.S. Well, maybe it's nine pins, not five. Because uh, now it's 12, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, like, you know, five is very small, so nine yeah. is good, and then 12, you just add more, so... so. We also have here, in 1842, the first illustrated weekly magazine in the U.S. published their first issue in New York City. An illustrated weekly magazine, that's cool. Yeah, that is. Yeah. That's back a long ways. Oh, yeah. Uh, then, uh, Brados looks like he's AFK, maybe, not sure, um, and yes, he is, so, Blob. All right. In 1847, Michigan is the first state to abolish capo uh, capital punishment. Cool. Huh. That's interesting. So, no more death penalty in Michigan. No. Yep. In 1852, the first United States public bath opens in New York City. So, a like, like, uh, public, like, uh, like, a, like a cleaning bath. Like, not like a bathroom, but like, a, like yeah, the, the Roman baths. baths. Yeah, Roman baths. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And they had something like that on the on the Titanic too. Yeah, I, th like, I think uh, it's uh, Turkish baths and such. Okay, yeah. I think it's I think it's a I think it's a recreational bath where um, you know uh, we have that in Germany where you can pay and uh, you just swim there and there's a lot of people and uh, it's either in a hall or outside. Uh, I think it's one of those things. Yeah, well, I remember in uh, England going to bath. And all the Roman baths and everything they had it there. Really, that was really interesting. Yeah. I'd like to go give that yeah, a look, too. Like, like they have swimming pools and stuff, and yeah. uh, I think it's uh, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Anywho, in 1853, the first practical fire engine was uh, entering the service in the United States, and it was drawn, uh, drawn by horses, of course. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, 1853, let's see here, 1853, uh, U.S. Uh, fire wagon, let's uh, see if there's something like that, huh, yeah, look at that, let me figure that for us, that has a motor, never mind, hold on a second, so I guess it's a fire wagon, uh, what does it say, fire, practical fire engine, first practical fire engine, 1853, so let's see here, oh, so it's steam powered, but no, it was horse drawn. It said horse drawn, yeah. Yeah, horse drawn. So I guess, well, what's with the steam? I guess pressure? Well, that doesn't look like horse drawn at all. Uh -huh. Hmm. This looks horse drawn. But it still has the big old smokestack, but you can clearly see where you attach the horses. So, yeah. I, so I wonder why, like. So that has to, that's the same thing. So that is horse drawn. But why is there a big old chimney? Well, I don't know about the chimney, but wouldn't that be to carry water? you got to bring it to the site and hook it up. Yeah, well, no, this whole container is obviously for water. I wonder if that's uh, maybe like the same how they how they fill the, the train engines. They have that as a, yeah. as a thing just to dunk it in there. Yeah, so, that makes sense. All right. If you're going to guess, that's a good guess. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on up into 1862. This is, uh, this is interesting. All right. In 1862, the United States um, income tax was uh, first um, uh, put into motion uh, with 3% of incomes for um, more than $600 and 5% of incomes tax for more than $10,000. Huh. And the camel's nose was under the tent. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Look at it today. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the saying goes, uh, do you have the saying? What? The camel's nose? The camel's nose is under the tent? Yeah, once yeah. it got in with the tax, it just keeps growing and growing and growing. Yep. A camel's nose under the tent. A small, seemingly inconsicuous, uh, or yeah, innocuous act or decision that will lead to much larger, more serious, and less desirable consequences down the line. The term refers to an alleged Arab proverb that if a camel is allowed to get its nose inside of a tent, it will be impossible to prevent the rest of it from entering. So, yeah. Yeah. I remember sales tax in this wonderful state of California was like 2% or something. Oh, man. When I was a kid. Yo, you want to see something nuts? Like, like you know, I was just, you know, the other day when I was, uh, when I was filling uh, the gas. Yeah. I was just looking and it said uh, federal tax, 5 cents. Yeah. California state tax, 40 cents. Yeah. What oh, the yeah. hell is wrong with California? Bruh. Like, 
ridiculous. I I could tell you, but then the uh, it you? goes uh, more longer. Yeah. Uh, but hey, we got the uh, Emancipation Proclamation. You did your three, right? Or is this your third? Love? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, have you done three already? I, I, I really need to count. <laughs> oh, I, I did my three. I thought it's your turn. Uh, we have the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863. It was issued by Abraham Lincoln to free the slaves in the U.S. Confederate States during the Civil War. So, yeah. it wasn't uh, abolishing the slaves and doing all this moral, righteous stuff isn't the reason why we entered the war. Uh, but it soon became the reason why we need to win the war. So, Abraham Lincoln knew how to, uh, how to dance around things like that. Mm -hmm. And at that same time, Franz Schubert's Misa Solemnis premiered in Leipzig. Or I, I can't pronounce that. Um, Leipzig. Leipzig, yeah, that one. We also have a, pardon me, another historic event here in 1869. During the War of the Triple Alliance, Paraguay's capital, uh, uh, Asuncion, fell to Brazilian forces led by General uh, Joao de Souza da Francesca Costa. A hell of a beard there. So, it almost looks like he has just like a, a solid egg of hair completely around his head. So, but dang. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's go back up into Blob. In 1877, Queen Victoria pro uh, is proclaimed uh, uh, to be the Empress of India. Oh, ah. cool. Not to be confused with Queen Victoria II, you know, of the Y Files, who probably should be the Empress yeah. of India. You know, I don't know. Well, she was the, the Queen of. In 1879, Johannes Brahms' violin concerto in D major premieres in Leipzig. Oh, another premiere in Leipzig. Cool. And in 1880, building of the Panama Canal begins. Oh, yes. Yeah, there's a biggie. Now, uh, I don't believe that's like the U.S. involvement because there have been there were so many nations. Like France tried to do it. You know, some other people have tried to do it, and, and then the U.S. came in and. It, it was painful, but we did it. Right. Um, but, uh, like, how long did it take to uh, build the Panama Canal? So let's see here. Uh, it was the greatest infrastructure project the world had ever seen, with the 48-mile-long uh, Panama Canal officially opened in 1914. After 10 years of construction, it fulfilled a vision that had been tempted for... But 1914, so 10 years, 1904, this, it started in 1880. So we're talking about the actual U.S. involvement right there. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, how long did the French try to build the Panama Canal? Uh, it tried... They started in 1880, so right there. Uh... Malaria, yellow fever, and other tropical diseases consp uh, conspired against the Le, uh, the De Lespes uh, campaign, and after nine years and a loss of approximately 20,000 lives, the Good French grief. attempt went bankrupt. Good grief. So, yeah, as I said, the, the French and the U.S., and, and I, I, don't, I think there were a couple other people who tried, but it took, uh, so from 1880 until 1914, so now, that did, is 34 years. When did they widen it? Uh, when did they widen? Because it was going to become obsolete. It wasn't big enough. By the way, if you take the planning into uh, consideration, um, the earliest record regarding a canal across the Isthmus of Panama was in 1534. Mm, when Charles V, when Charles v Holy Roman Emperor and King of Spain, ordered a survey for a route through the Americas in order to ease the voyage for ships traveling uh, between Spain and Peru. So the Panama Canal has been a thought as far back as the as the um, the Roman Empire. He said from Constantinople, yes. right? Like that is bananas, bro. You know. 1544. Yeah, the Eastern Roman Empire. Wow. That means no, the whole the Holy Roman you Empire. Have to go back that far, then, because that's the only way you can figure it out. Oh, definitely. By locks. Yeah. So when did they widen it? Does it say right there? Uh, well, I've looked, and um, it says here uh, 2016. Okay, that's recently. right. Recently. Yeah. But I'm, I'm pretty sure, because like, you're probably thinking of like an, uh, a more uh, uh, earlier dates, uh, because you know ships have always been getting bigger, so yeah. they might have had a widening, and they might have done another widening. Yeah. And then they're actually in the process of doing yet another widening right now. So... 
Uh, but let's move on up here to um, uh, 1881. Uh, we have uh, Ambrose Bierce was appointed editor of the Wasp magazine. All right. And while that was happening, uh, Dr. John Watson was first introduced to Sherlock Holmes in a story written by Arthur Conan Doyle. Huh. So Sherlock Holmes' a little sidekick. Yeah. Yeah. We also have in 1890, the Rose Parade, which was, which was then known as the Tournament of Roses, was first held in Pasadena, California. Well, wait a minute. It's, it's not called the Tournament of Roses anymore? Uh, well, it's not no, official. The, they still call it that on TV. But, yeah. that, oh, that's something else. The Tournament of Roses? Yeah. Um, are you sure? Oh, oh, no. The Rose Parade, then known as the Tournament of Roses. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So no, this is the parade, not the, uh, not the, not the football. Not the football. I understand yeah. that. Yeah, the Tournament of Roses yeah. was the parade. So they, well, they, they they probably retained the name, but they changed the official title to the Rose Parade, but they call it the Tournament of Roses still because of posterity. I don't know. I don't know. In eighteen ninety, you think one of them would have died by now? I don't know. But we also have. I'm sorry. No, no. Uh, in 1895, uh, Aguinaldo became a Freemason, joining Pillar Lodge Number 203 in Imus Cavite. Okay. Uh, oh, revolutionary and first president of the Philippines. So that's you know probably aided into him getting in that power right there. But he's a Freemason. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, you get a good one here. Yes, in 1896, German physicist Wilhelm Röntgen announces his discovery of X-rays. And in Germany, they are still named after him, Röntgenstrahlen. Yes, and actually, they, they talk about uh, Röntgen uh, radiation. Uh, they, they they spoke about it like uh, during the series Chernobyl. They said like you know uh, the robot could survive like three Röntgens, and so he sent an in, and, and it, it's not the correct number, but it wasn't it wasn't getting, going into an environment of three Röntgens. It was going into an environment of like fifteen thousand. Oh, so. You know, direct exposure yeah. to a nuclear core and the meltdown yeah. function. Yeah. That is as much radiation as you can get. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. You have two more here, good sir. All right. Um, uh, one moment. Uh, where are we? Ah, uh, here. Nineteen oh two. Yes. The first Rose Bowl Tournament Park, Pasadena, California. Michigan beat Stanford with forty-nine to zero. Most valuable player, Neil Snow, Michigan FB. That's, uh... Oh. F <laughs> FB, man. Yeah, no, that's... It's cool, so the first Rose Bowl. So, uh... So, after the Tournament of Roses, by, yeah. uh, 12 years. Yeah, but... What, what does FB mean? Uh, forward back? No. It can't be right. Uh, FB. Brados, you're not here. Why? Help us. Come on. You're the football guy. You literally played it. Read, read, read it in the sentence. Uh, well, well, oh, are. yeah. Right. Oh. What is an yeah, FB? The, FB? Fullback. Football, probably. Fullback. Football, fullback. I imagine. Fullback? Fullback. Think back of, oh, oh, yeah. Fullback. The position. Fullback. 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 Back when fullback, fullback okay. was actually a prevalent position. Okay. Yeah, so and we all know of Michigan in a fullback. Yeah. 49 to none, though. That is a pain, dude. They got wrecked. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. I will and say, fullback is a dying position. Yeah. Like, it is slowly dissipating. Yeah. I feel like we need more of them. We need more fullbacks. You're right. And, and also in 1902, Nathan Stubblefield makes the first public demonstration of radio in Pennsylvania. Oh. Well, that's cool. Oh, yeah, we were talking about it because, like, uh, uh, during uh, our live stream yesterday, we were, you know, the 1922 was really the year of the radio. So 20 years before that, this was, like, the first public demonstration. So that's really cool. Because 1922, yeah. like, it was uh, January 1st, 1922, I think. Um, uh, actually, no, well, we, if not January 1st, we would have covered it uh, today. Uh, but it was it was in the Januarys, I think early Januarys, uh the, uh, when radio was first put into the White House. Okay. So. And a lot of and stations opened. Yeah. Many years earlier. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, whose turn is it? Um, okay, I think it's, uh, Brados, if you're, if you're back. Uh, we have a 1903 one yeah. for you. Royal Coronation in 1903 in Delphi. <laughs> Delphi. 
a great Durbar, or formal reception, marked the coronation of King Edward VII as Emperor of India. The British release some 16,000 prisoners in honor of the occasion. Nice. That's for the prisoner thing. Oof. What? Oh, wait, they might have been prisoners that were, like, that were wrongfully thrown in. Yeah. Yeah, like, well, then, um... Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Or, or anyway. maybe, um... Well, maybe it was, like, uh, like uh, from, like, a war or something. Uh, but this, this seems to be peaceful. So, I don't know. Huh. Yeah, we don't know. Ah, in the year 19... Who? I said it's Theodore Roosevelt. Ro Roosevelt. Edith Roosevelt unveiled new renovations to the White House, including a new West Wing. Yo, oh, you know, a new West Wing. Yo, you're, you're kind of hard to, to, to hear. You're like way back or something. Um, but I kind of heard you. Oh, uh, for those who didn't hear him, it says uh, 1993 President Theodore Roosevelt and Edith Roosevelt uh, unveiled new renovations to the White House, including a new West Wing. So, you know, the West Wing. Yeah. There we go. Yep. Yes. And then before you continue, I'm actually going to do the split here real quick. Try to catch some of the show a little bit All right, thank you for joining, Golden Moon. All right, we shall see you again soon. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. No, he'll be back. And, and this brings us to our new sponsor, Established Splits, based on an old Scottish custom where splits are made before the time runs out. Oh, my gosh. We are... You're established by established big this. I'm gonna I'm gonna establish like um <laughs> an establishment. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Uh, Bratos, you have another one here in 1906. Is it this one? Yes. In the year 1906, Dutch law makes driver's license mandatory. Good as it should. Good and on that. We gotta bump the age up from 16 to 23 or something, you know? That's just me. Although that would kind of screw you, Brados, but, uh... And I guess if you prove that you can... Because, Brados, you're a good driver. So, I, you know... Yeah. Like, you know me, I am very anal retentive when it comes to driving. And you, you, got, you have my trust. So, I, you know, there would be exceptions. But yes. for most people at the age of 16, like, you know, seriously, like, like... They have to ask to go to the bathroom, but you're giving them the ability to drive a two-ton death machine with controlled explosives that could kill anybody. You know, like that's madness. You know, in my opinion. But, yeah. Well, you're near child. Well, the Netherlands and the United States it would probably violate the Second Amendment. Uh, that is a that is a decent argument. Um. Maybe we can talk about that on the Kick Peanut this Sunday. You know, next Sunday. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, uh, Mr. Blob, it's your turn here in 1908. Yeah, I just want to say if you require a license for a car, what's next? Uh, you need a license for a gun? Uh, yes. In 1908, Jack Hobbs makes his intentional debut in England's second test win over Australia at the MCG, uh, scoring 83 and 28 in his two innings. Goes on to becoming the leading run scorer and century maker in first class cricket history. Cricket. And there you have it. If we don't understand what's going on, it's cricket. Yep. It is a language all its own. Yes. And in 1910, a British naval officer, David Beatty, is promoted to rear admiral. And I believe uh, that was important. I, I kind of remember researching this a little bit last year when we were doing this. Um, well, there seems to be something wrong with our bloody ships today. Yeah. That's well, what he like, said. The two of them had exploded in the Battle of Jutland in uh, 1916. Ah. Um, it's, uh, I think this was like the he was the first one to be in the position of Rear Admiral. I'm not sure. But I do know for certain that he was... Uh, very known for wearing his cap crooked, you know, as we see in the picture. That's uh, yeah. it's his signature look. So. Yes, that's true. Yep. And uh, in 1912, 
Sun Yat-sen uh, forms the Republic of China. We're going to move on up into 1913. The U.S. Post Office began parcel post deliveries. So not just letters now, but now they're delivering boxes and such. So that's pretty cool. And one year after that, 1914, uh, on January 1st, the first scheduled airline flight from St. Petersburg to Tampa, uh, Tony Janice is the pilot. So that's awesome. So way back. Like. Yes. Yeah. And then we also have, as well as 1914, the St. Petersburg Tampa Aircraft Line became the world's first scheduled airline, as I just said, covering the 18 mile distance, 23 minutes, uh, in, well, in 23 minutes. The service ceased after three months. So I wonder why uh, they have the same article in twice. That's weird. Like, it's literally the same thing, but with more information. Yes, but uh, it omits uh, in one thing that Tony Janus was the pilot. Oh, well. You know, you'd think it'd be really easy to, like, combine those two into one article and then highlight it because, you know, it's kind of significant. Like, yeah. you know, I've been saying this for almost a year now. Like, I have got to, like, email this source and be like, yo, I volunteer my time to help clean up this mess. But, you know, as I said, we're getting extremely busy on our end and uh, I have a lot of ideas, you know, so I might not even be able to, to fulfill that anymore. Oh, well. Um... Anyway, uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Brados, uh, you got one in 1916. Here we go. That's interesting. In the year 1916, the first, the first, first, yeah, one is first one transfusion using sword and cool one is performed. Um, you're you're distant again. Are you like? Are you doing something? Like, I I don't I don't want to like oh. intrude on your life. Um, oh no, you're fine. No, I think it's just my yeah, like, back. Okay. You sound like you're right. like walking around in the background in your room. Oh uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. You didn't eat enough oats today. I uh, all right. Well, uh, let's just go up to Blob then. All right, I, I just wanted to say who is storing blood. That sounds like vampires, but okay. In 1917, T.E. Lawrence joins the forces of the Arabian Sheikh Faisal al Hussein, beginning his adventures that will lead him to Damascus by October 1918. Lawrence of Arabia. Yes. A uh, very big uh, figure in the First World War. Did a lot of stuff against the Turks, you know, in the desert against their um, their railway attempts and. Uh, was a really big thorn in their side and uh, you know I, I would argue that if it wasn't for him um, like the war probably would have lasted a little bit longer especially you know in the Arabian area I don't know That's... yeah in 1919 because we talked about him before British naval officer David Beatty is promoted to full admiral ah okay so and like... at the same time uh, yes go 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 ahead and at the same day, Edsel Ford succeeds his father, uh, his father Henry Ford, as president of the Ford Motor Company. Ah, and uh, as we know, Ford stands for like you know one of two things: found on road dead, or uh, fix or repair daily. Pretty sure there's other acronyms, you know, for that. So, and no offense to Ford lovers, but keep in mind there's people out there who like Apple too. So, you might be wrong, you might be right. Just you know, look at your options. We're going to move on up into 1923. The Union of Socialist Soviet Republics was established. The USSR. And yeah, we have a one century ago uh, um, uh, show I'm going to be doing here in about an hour or so after we're done with this. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm going to be talking about uh, both 1923s here. Uh, so yeah, uh, keep your eyes out for those. We're going to move on up here into 1924. The Grossdeutsch... Uh, uh, can you read that, please? I, I, will, I, will, I will just take that. Uh, yeah. The Großdeutsche Volksgemeinschaft Völkische Block replaces the NSDAP. That's the Nationalsozialistische Deutsche Arbeiterpartei, um, Hitler's party. Oh, okay. So whatever this party is replaced Hitler's party. Uh, but then yeah. didn't he rise to power because, again? So. Because he went to jail, but then um, came uh, out of jail five years later and... Uh, you know, uh, 
and then took over the German Socialist Party. I see. Uh, yeah, he found, founded a new one, I think, uh, but I'm not entirely sure. No, I don't think he founded the, the what eventually became the Nazi Party. I think he joined it, and then eventually he just rose and became the leader of it. So I, I do remember now he did have his own thing going on. It failed, and then he joined something else already established, and then he led it to success or, you know, like, we all know history. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, do continue on, good sir. 1925? Anywho, in 1925, uh, uh, here we go again. Australian cricketer Bill Ponsford becomes the first batsman to score a century in each of his first two tests when he hits 128 against England in the second test in Melbourne. Australia wins by 81 runs. All right. Go Australia. So that's uh, that's probably a lot of runs, but uh, we don't know as we don't play cricket. Yep. Cricket. <laughs> cricket wireless. Yeah, but they have cricket wickets, so check those out. Cricket wicket? In 1928, the first United States air-conditioned office building opens in San Antonio. Nice. That's Texas. Yeah, Texas. Uh, they need it, so... Yeah. Could you imagine like so, living in a time without air conditioning? Like, oh my god! Like, well, I mean, they had water conditioning before, but that was a bit bad because only fish could work there. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that is true. But at that also same in, time, go go ahead. Oh yeah, also in 1928, the Allgemeine Vereinigung Radio Omrop (AVRO) begins broadcasting in the Netherlands. Oh, so and they, they also sponsored a very famous chess tourney, one of the strongest in, an, I think, 1938. Cool. Uh, two years later, we have 1930, Jurgens and Van Den Berg merge with Lever Brothers to form Unilever. All right, what is Unilever? I'm going to look that up here real quick. Uh, oh. The very big food company. Yeah. Uh, it is a British multinational consumer goods company with headquarters in London, England. All right. Okay. Also, you don't have to eat their um, totally great food in uh, America. Uh, well, we have delicious food, but that doesn't mean it's nutritious or healthy or, you know, sometimes even tasty, actually. But, yeah. Yeah. Oh, they are also the largest producer of soap in the world and other stuff. So, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, people need soap. Well, we got a uh, historic publication here in 1932, and I am going to just completely destroy this word. Sorry in advance, uh, Blob and the rest of your countrymen. Uh, Rasse und Siedlung Schafshams published Himmler's Wedding Laws. What the hell is a wedding law? But... It's a Rasse und Siedlungs Hauptamt. That's. Um, um, you know, a very bad, uh, bad people there. Um, it was for uh, race and settlement, uh, literally translated. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's Himmler. You know, he's a leading Nazi and you know Reichsführer of the SS. You know, Heinrich Himmler, and, one of the worst people who have and, ever existed. And if I recall it correctly from my uh, education, which was like 20 years ago. Uh, the wedding laws were so you could only wed uh, non-Jewish people, like... Ah, um, uh, so it's segregation and stuff, I see. Yeah, it's ve very racist laws, very uh, horrible laws. Not surprising, though, coming from him. Um, but then, uh, two years after that disgusting thing happened, uh, 1934, Alcatraz officially became a federal prison. So yeah, so you know, it used to be a military outpost and then became a federal prison. Nice. So, and then now it's just a, uh, it's just a landmark to go yes. and see for an exorbitant price. What's up, Lob? I thought you continue. Oh, uh, well, 1934, uh, International Telecommunication uh, Union was established. So ITU, see, uh, International Telecommunication Union, yeah. ITU, still going around. Uh, it is a specialized agency of the United Nations responsible for many matters related to information and communication technologies. 
It was established on 17th of May in 1865 as the International Telegraph Union, making it the oldest UN agency. So it says here, uh, so uh, yeah, so this is when the rename in 1934, I guess. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I think, I think this time I didn't uh, count. Yeah, well, I, and- I, I thought it was four, but whatever. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, in 1934, uh, Nazi Germany passes the law for the prevention of hereditarily deceased offspring. Das Gesetz zur Verhütung Erbkranken Nachwuchses, or also known as the sterilization law. Yeah, more disgusting stuff. Let's move on, please. Yeah, yeah it, it forced a uh, medical procedure of sterilization on, uh, well, what it says. So it was kind of essentially like China is doing to a lot of people there, and Middle East countries are doing stuff to women too. Uh, yeah, so essentially it was genocide. Yeah. So, and uh, where are we next? 1936. Yes. Yeah. The first, the first newspaper to microfilm its current issues, the New New York Herald Tribune. Ah, and we and we know that microfilm uh, was uh, invented, I believe, in 1922. If I remember last night correctly, so like uh, 12 years later, uh, newspapers started yeah. using it. So that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. And in 1937, safety glass in vehicle windscreens become mandatory in Great Britain. Good. You don't want yeah, what, little bugs in your teeth and what, stuff. What's next with all that safety stuff requiring a driver's license? Oh wait, we had it already. That's already established. <laughs> established licenses. <laughs> Our new sponsor, based on an old Scottish custom where you can do nothing. <laughs> 1939, speaking of automobiles, Hewitt Packard was founded by Bill Hewitt and David Packard in a garage in Palto Alto, California, the birthplace of Silicon Valley. It's not too far from where I'm at, like half a state away, so that's really cool. Which, which makes Silicon Valley older than the modern computer. Uh, yes. Yeah. We also have an appointment of interest in 1941, Russian General Georgi Zhukov appointed Chief of General Staff. Yep. Uh, He's portrayed really epically in the movie Death of Stalin. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, uh, as someone would say, our boy Zhukov. (laughs) Pardon me. Hold on a second. Zhukov. What? Do I sound distant now? No. Do I sound, okay, so I don't sound as distant now? Okay. No, I can hear you better. And sorry about that, you know, when you gotta sneeze, you gotta sneeze. So. Oh, no, you're good. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we also have in 1942, US and 25 other countries signed a United Declaration against the Axis. So, oh, oh. Yeah, huh. yeah, I'm not, yeah, yeah, I don't even know what to say. So, because uh, we have a German, I'm just like, watch out, Germany, the Allies are coming for you. So. <laughs> <laughs> actually, the people that wear red, white, and blue are coming. Actually, as a German, I uh, welcome the allies coming for us. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Cool. I mean, it was basically red, white, and blue. Blue versus red. Red versus white, red. Black. And black. Uh, you know. Pretty much the whole deck. Yeah. Yeah. I think we got the wrong a bit, but okay. Yeah. Okay, maybe, okay, a little bit of green. A little bit of green and white. We'll, we'll dabble that in there as well. And brown, and you should go to 1946. Be- because Hirohito announces the obvious in 1946. Huh. Bredos. Yes. Your turn, 1946. Zeus! Zeus! In 1946, Emperor Hirohito of Japan announces he is not a god. Yeah, no shit, you know this. Nobody you know here is a god, except for Keanu Reeves. Yeah. No, no, what about, uh, what about Morgan Freeman? Oh, yeah, Morgan Freeman and Chuck. Okay, Morgan Freeman, Keanu Reeves, Chuck Norris, and Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, by the way, in, uh, in 1946, also Chuck Norris announced he is not Emperor Hirohito. <laughs> Well, yeah. The first thing that went through my mind was from uh, that movie uh, Road to El Dorado, It's Tough to Be a God. That song. So. <laughs> it's tough to be a god. Ha ha. Ha ha. Godhood. 
Speaking of God, God of War, Brados, you have another 46. Game. 1946. And yeah, the U.S. first computer finished by Mockley slash Ecker. Nice. Eniac, they better and be of, good. And of Look course, the term ENIAC stands for? Uh, ENIAC stands for... Uh, Electric Miracle Integrator and Computer. Yes. It was the first programmable electronic general purpose digital computer. Uh, completed in 1945, there were other computers that had these features, but the ENIAC had all of them in one package. It was Turing complete and able to solve a large class of numerical problems through programming. That's really cool. It's just its own little. It's just a giant box. Essentially, I mean, like there's a, there's a there's a crazy picture out there. Actually, hold on a second. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, one gigabyte then and now. So let's see here. Yeah. Images. Of course, other computers were used before, such as in cracking the Enigma in the um, British secret uh, operation in Bletchley Park. Yeah. Yeah. So gigabyte used to be a huge box. Yeah, like this is one gigabyte of storage right there. And then now you can have terabytes in a thumb drive. Yeah, know? like in just a tiny little object, like the size of your pinky. Yeah, yeah, here, here we go. 1956, five megabytes right here. 2019, one yeah. terabyte. You know. Yeah. That just shows how far we've come. Yeah, and how far we'll go. You know, who knows where we'll be in like another, you know, 50 years. Like, well, we won't even need a. We won't even need an SD card. Miniature yeah. eventually uh, doesn't, um, you know. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, <clears throat> one more. 1948, the first color newsreel film in Pasadena, California. Nice. Go oh, Pasadena. Oh, and uh, Bob, your turn now and you start with cricket. How lovely. <laughs> yes, but it's okay because we talk about him again. Australian cricket master ba uh, batsman Don Bradman scores 132 on the first day of the third test versus India. Follows up with 127 no in, two, uh, in second innings, <laughs> whatever that means. Uh, Australia wins by 233. Yeah, I think and, 127 number or something. I have no idea. It's cricket, as we always say. Uh, yeah, cricket as we're holding a coffee mug. It's cricket in their language is weak. <laughs> cricket. Cricket. Ha, 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 ha. Yes, you, like gotta, you gotta make that. That's your job. That's your. Uh, I'm giving you that uh, that uh, job, Greg Brados. You gotta make that. Yes, we need to. We need to make that a thing. That should be the. That should be the first thing we do, on the Omni Coalition meetup. That has to be the first thing we do. Yeah. We all just show up with a mug, cheer, cricket. Ha, 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 ha. We just we just talked about Donald Bradman and in 1949. Agri Arguably cricket's greatest ever batsman, ex-Australian captain Don Bradman, is knighted. The first time a cricketer is bestowed with an honor solely, um, solely for his contribution to the game. So that's really cool. You know, let that be a lesson to people. Never give up your dreams because you can still be knighted even in weird things like cricket, you know? But that's awesome. Like... Yeah. Be yeah. the greatest and be knighted. Yeah. Too bad Italy is not real. <laughs> what the hell? What did I hear? No, no, Annie. it's Australia that's not real. That one, uh, that one YouTuber who has, who's like solely devoted to proving I mean, that Australia is just a conspiracy. <laughs> so it's like I know people from there, or are they just from New Zealand? Oh, they're being paid by the CIA to say they're from there. Yeah, I no, believe that's... in Australia, guys. Don't worry, I'm not crazy. Well, I am, but not that crazy. Well, maybe. You get. We at least know. I mean, it's kind of obvious that it exists on the map. Yeah. And anyway, in 1950, the Vietnamese uh, communist revolutionary Ho Chi Minh begins his offensive against French troops in Indochina. Yep, because it's France French. was too busy still reconstructing after the Second World War, and so. Like, After yeah. getting put back together thanks to the U.S. Yeah. 
Well, in Britain, you know, they, they help. Yeah, in the UK, well. Yeah. We did it better. <laughs> we did it with more, we did it with more enthusiasm. <laughs> that reminds me of, like, that one meme I saw, like, a uh, British troop uh, seeing uh, a U.S., uh, a U.S. guy with a trench gun turned the German front line into fucking meat confetti. <laughs> like, oh my god. And sorry, I keep I mean, bashing. I'm not intentionally bashing on the Germans. I'm sorry. Like, it's a World War One meme. <laughs> and we did do that, though. We did turn them into confetti. Anyway, sorry, Mr. Plug. 1952. I'm so, I feel so bad. It's your turn, Greta. Oh, it's or... my turn? Or... Hey, oh, my yeah. turn? Okay. Uh, 1952, we have Dmitry Sostakovich completed his fifth st string quartet. And I believe that is the first German, uh, Russian name uh, that I actually pr uh, pronounce correctly, if I can talk right. Dmitry Sostakovich. So. Dmitry. It's the Russian, yeah, it's yes, not the... Oh, that's the... Oh, we've seen him quite a bit on the TDH. Oh, Dimitri. yeah, we're gonna, like, we're we've starting a whole times. new other one. Here we go again. <laughs> so, get yes. ready to get Sostakovich. <laughs> <laughs> and then in September, get ready for tennis. Here comes Wimbledon. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, but then we have, in 1954, NBC broadcast the first live color U.S. coast-to-coast -coast telecast, the Tournament of Roses Parade from Pasadena, California. Well, look at that! California uh, making more history. That's cool. Yeah. California being useful. I know, right? It's rare, but it happens. So. Indeed, then, indeed. At that same time, in 1954, Rose and Cotton Bowl were the first uh, sport color cats. So, they, like, yet another example of you can merge the two into one. You know, but yeah. Uh, but All I can say. There's only one college team that is not allowed in the Cotton Bowl. What? Bamba. Huh. Uh, oh. <laughs> we'll never, never allow them into the Cotton Bowl. <laughs> uh. <laughs> no, no, because they have too many of good players. Okay. Oh, they're, I thought you were meaning something else. They're not else. trash enough. Oh no, I was, no, I was referring. They're not trash enough to be in the Cotton Bowl. Oh, okay, but you said Alabama, right? Yeah. You don't see a, a different other correlation there that might be bad? Oh, I know what you mean. I know what you mean, <laughs> but I'm not referring to that. Okay. I'm not talking about that thing. Don't worry. I'm not I'm not being that guy. Oh, okay, good, because I, th apparently that's my job, because I was apparently being that guy. <laughs> no, no, I am that me? guy, but I don't feel like being that guy today. Well, that's First all right. First day of New I, Year's, I'm, and I'm being controversial. I, I'm the town's asshole. I'll, I'll be that guy. But, but anyway, we got uh, who just came back. Yes, I did. Welcome back, Golden and Blue. who isn't in the Cotton Bowl? I missed the tail end of that. Oh, uh, Alabama. He was saying uh, don't let them be in the Cotton Bowl because they're too good. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Come back. Yeah. I don't like, and I just genuinely dislike Alabama for for very good reason. Yeah. Well, I'll jump on that day, uh, bandwagon just for fun. Alabama wagon? Yeah. Alabama wagon? Yeah. Oh, my God. Hide. In 1954 as well, Yugoslav Parliament Chairman and Vice President Milovan DGS uh, criticized communism. Huh. I'm pretty sure that didn't work out well for him. So, well, especially when it was a communist country at the time under uh, under Russia's thumb. Uh, well, he died on April twentieth, nineteen ninety five. So he lived. So he, so he was ex he was expelled from the party in nineteen uh, fifty four. Uh, Arrested in nineteen fifty five. So he didn't get away uh, with it, but they did. After, well. after that, uh, in nineteen fifty six, he had to go into exile. You know, sounds about right. Stand up for what you believe in, you know. Like don't don't be a don't be a stepping stone. So well, he was lucky he lived. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, he was very lucky he lived. So. Anime is only real if you don't believe it. So believe it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Remember the boxing move? So. Start still. <laughs> you just start boxing. Yeah. Wham! 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 So. Wham! Bratos! I believe it's your it, turn again, 1957? The year 1957. An Irish Republican Army. IRA. Unit attacks Brookboro RUC barracks, 
in one of the most famous incidents of the IRA's Operation Harvest. Oh wow! So, Operation... It sounds like a it sounds like a club, <laughs> the IRA. Uh, Operation Harvest IRA. Let's see here. Uh, border campaign. Uh, the border campaign was uh, a guerrilla warfare campaign carried out be- by the Irish Republican Army against targets in Northern Ireland with the aim of overthrowing British rule there and creating a united Ireland. It was also referred to as the resistance campaign by some Irish Republican activists. Huh. Hmm. That was a vicious yes. war. Yeah. And the, the RUC, that was the Royal Ulster Constabulary, it was the police force in Northern Ireland from 1922 to 2001. Okay, huh. I'll just see you, so, Victoria. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if you're still watching, but thank you. Sorry, I was responding to her uh, live chat comment here. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so it was essentially police barracks. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah. Okay, go on. Uh, yeah, I got another 157 here, Mr. Bredos. Ah, music history. Interesting. In the year 1957, Benjamin Britten's ballet, ballet, or yeah, ballet, Prince and the Popper premieres in London. Now, I've actually heard about that one, Prince and the Popper, the Popper. Or something. That's uh, that's the one where they switched identities, right? Like, I don't know. Like uh, when the prince wanted to see what it's like to be living as a peasant, and the oh, peasant yeah. wanted to be. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Then here you go. In also 1957, France returns Saar to becomes the tenth state of German federal rep. Huh? Yeah. What does that mean? Saarland. Uh, it's it's a Saarland. Uh, it's the tenth state oh. of the German Federal Republic. Ah, oh, okay, see. so it's like a county or something. I get it. Or a uh, it's it's similar to a United States state. Yeah. Okay, I get it. But, it's a very small That's one. Y'all call, y'all call the, the, er, uh, Oh wait, oh. Yeah. And we, uh, it's, and we also do the same jokes about it as you do about Alabama. So. <laughs> oh, oh so, so SAR is literally, so SAR is literally just Alabama, but Germany. SAR is, Ger- is SAR is German Alabama. Good lord. Where? Let's. Uh, I gotta or, look well, at this. Where, okay, where is SAR? Okay, correction. We're. Alabama is the American version of SAR. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Germany was around first. Yeah, yeah, that is a good that is a good point right there. So I see, yeah, so it's, yeah, yeah, we're right just... on the border with France, so yeah. We're just we're just everyone's so familiar with Alabama, so they wouldn't even acknowledge that SAR was first. Or that I, SAR existed first. I guess prior. then Alabama out SAR SAR then. Dang. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's Liz. Blog's turn. All right. In 1957, uh, 1957, Georgetown, Penang becomes a city by a royal charter granted by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Now, where is that? Georgetown, Penang. That sounds uh, out in the like uh, uh, Asian area. Uh, sound Australian to me. Uh, George City of Malaysia. So, Malaysia? Huh. Let's see here. Uh, no, I don't want images. I want maps. There we Georgetown go. is down in South Africa. Uh, well, no, it's there's a lot of Georgetowns. Well, there's Georgetown. The US too. Well, yeah, yeah, it's the Malaysia, capital okay. of so the way down there. Yeah. Huh. yeah. All right. The capital of Penang in Malaysia. All right. Yes. Big All right. And as you all know, uh, Queen Elizabeth II died recently on uh, the 8th of September, 2022. Yeah, yeah. sure did. How old was she? Was she 101? Uh, was she 100? She was uh, queen for 70 years. Yeah. Uh, the longest British ruling British queen. Yeah, not the longest ruling monarch ever. That goes to King... British, King. Yeah, it's so there's, you know, there, there's a difference. They were yes. saying longest British ruling uh, monarch, yes. The longest monarch ever? No. Yes. So. Someone oh yeah, yeah, not even close. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, uh, like a, a decade. Oh, really? King yeah. Louis the Fourteenth, I say. She was seventy something years, wasn't she? Yeah, uh, King, the well, longest uh, ever monarch. Um, yeah, jumping like eighty-three years or eighty-six years. I don't uh, know. King Louis the Fourteenth. Uh, 
uh, served as monarch for more than 72 years after taking the throne at the age of four. So, uh, I will Elizabeth. say, King Charles III right now, I don't know if he'll last much longer. He doesn't... He might live another... Is, I mean, knowing how Queen Elizabeth was, because she lasted for... She lived for a long time. She had a very, very long life. Oh, yeah. Well, she Charles was, could she very was, well uh, have a long book. Oh. She was a strong woman. She she was a nurse in the Second World War and stuff, and she she mm -hmm. actually like you know she actually yeah. had a life. The prince was a pampered mm -hmm. guy, you know. Yeah. Like, I don't I don't know. Yeah. That... Well, it tells you why she didn't uh, yeah. abdicate the yeah, but for she... him. Yeah, she wouldn't do it. Yeah. yeah but... She was. She was not just a nurse in the war. She also uh, went to the front lines. To... That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember that. That's why I'm that saying, like, like, she was a badass. That. Yeah. You know, like she had like, a wow. Life. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. She really, like uh, she was. The... She's a legit tough leader. Like she's yeah. a power, a very strong leader. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, whoever's turn it was. You have another one here. I think it's Bredos, 1959. In the year 1959, Cuban dictator Fulgencio Batista flees Cuba for the Dominican Republic. Ah, he's a Cuban president and dictator. So this has to be, yeah, uh, um, uh, Fidel Castro. Took over, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The Bay of Pigs and everything like that for us. Yeah. Uh, but I see one more here. Uh, yeah, I just saw it, you know, in a passing glance. Another one. Uh, this is almost tailor-made for you, Mr. Bredos. Ah. In 1959, Chad becomes autonomous republic in French community. Nice. Go Chad! Me. The country that actually looks like the meme, which is kind of wild, so... It really does. It does. I've seen a picture of it, it does. Chad country meme. And see, somebody even, like, they even painted, like, all the uh, African provinces into the meme. So, but there's Chad... And Chad the country actually looks like the Chad the meme. That's kind of crazy. See, now, it looks like... So, yeah, it doesn't... It looks like Chad, but it doesn't look like Giga Chad. No, Giga Chad is a whole other thing. So... Yeah, he's a whole other level of yeah. Chad. He's like... He's S-tier Chad. Are you guys talking well, about... Oh, no, we're oh, talking about culture. It's cricket yeah. to you. Exactly. It's, it's yeah. me. You it's like a... It's, uh, yeah, yeah, meme culture. Uh, but uh, talking about one Chad to another, we have established uh, Chattels. Uh, good job, Blob has one in 1960 here. I have. Uh, in 1960, Johnny Cash plays the first of many free concerts behind bars at the San Quentin prison in California. Merle Haggard among the inmate audience. Oh, wow. Whoa, really? Yeah. Merle Haggard yeah. was among the. <laughs> So he was in jail at the yeah. time. Yeah. Oh. That. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, I know a bar that Kid Rock goes to to do karaoke. Or, well, one he attempted to go to and then he got kicked out because they wouldn't let him sing. <laughs> and I met, the, I, met the, I met the lady who kicked him out and she's. I can see why he wouldn't want to be there because she's pretty snotty. I don't like her. Uh, yeah. Well, they're lost, you know. They, they could have, uh, they could have all the coattails really good. And then he proceeded to walk down. There was a, another bar three buildings down within 100 feet of the other one. And then he, he sang there. And those people were very welcoming of the guy. And he's, little does anyone know, Kid, um, Kid Rock is just a good old boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And Hag Haggard was actually impressed by Cash and his music. Yeah. So that's why he started his career. Yeah. So 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 that inspired him. Yeah. That that's a, that, I love that. And, and he was he was, he was going down the wrong road and it straightened up his life. So that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. You know this is why everything is important. You know you don't know what little thing might you know just change your life one day. You that's know? the info of the day as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really good one. Yeah. It's gonna yeah. kind of make this next one seem you know not as cool. But uh, Mr. Blob, you got one here in 1962. Oh yeah, I was just saying um, he didn't break an entering and uh, was sentenced to three years in prison. Oh wow! Now they're just and then, the next day. He, yeah, well. In, in 1960, he got out and uh, then uh, started uh, in the country scene in Bakersfield. Cool. Yeah, that's so great. That is just so great. 
Yeah, so so later on that very same year. And look at the great music we got out of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, I know the... Yeah. See, this is why benefit concerts and, you know, like, you know, charity mm-hmm. things, legitimate things, you know, going and actually, you know, doing services to, to your community. Johnny Cash, free of charge, playing, created Merle Haggard. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. You know? Speaking of another band, uh, in 1962, the Beatles' Decca Records audition is unsuccessful. They are told guitar groups are on the way out. Huh. So, yeah. Yeah, and, sure. Yeah, and never was, uh, nothing was heard of that boy group again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. In 1964, Top of the Pops British pop music television program premieres. Acts performing include Dusty Springfield, The Rolling Stones, Dave Clark Five, The Hollies, Swinging Blue, and what? What? Wait a minute, the Hold Beatles. Hold on a second, there. That's weird. Huh. Yeah. Making a joke. Wait. What? Huh. Well, I guess uh, I guess it wasn't on the way out. Huh. Well, like right. how they highlighted the Beatle. Well, not the Beatle. They didn't Rolling highlight Stones. the Beatles. They highlighted the Rolling Stones. I mean, big band. They were a big name there in that oh, time. Yeah. But the I think the Beatles. Yeah. Well, actually, I think all of those, all of those fellas, all those bands. Yeah, all should be highlighted in my opinion. Five, they were all, uh, they, they were should, be, yeah. they they should were all be clickable links, yeah. Swinging yes, Blues, I, they, I believe them. they should be. Yeah. Swinging they, Blues? I don't know about Swinging Blues. I've never, I've never, I don't even know who they are, so. Either. That's the only one I don't know of. I'm your Venus, I'm your fire at your desire. Dang. That's the Swinging Blues? Yes. Oh. oh. Isn't that the jingle for like a, a shaving razor for women or no for some some wow. no This is a shaving razor for <laughs> Well, no like like some some like some feminine product or something they use that song in their jingle yeah. so, the, the Commercialism is drilled oh, no. this way deep oh, in no, my no, brain. No, no. Oh my god. No, I I confused it that that was shocking blue not the swinging blue Okay, okay, okay. okay. Oh, okay. So the swinging blue what? is still unknown. Yeah. Yeah, we well, don't yeah, know they about swinging blue. So they have something, if not just in anything else, but just here. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to move on up to 1965. 49-year-old former England international soccer forward Stanley Matthews became the only player to be awarded a knighthood while still playing Stoke City. I bet he was stoked there, dude. Yeah. You know. Oh my cool. god. Oh my god, they messed it, they messed it up. It's Goat. not swinging blue, but the swinging blue jeans. Oh, swinging blue, blue jeans. Wow, still so they left them. an entire word out. Yeah. But still doesn't help us. <laughs> I still haven't heard of them. I got the shike. I got the hippie, hippie shike. Kind of. Oh, okay. Hippie, yeah. hippie shake. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. Well, speaking of yeah. hippies, uh, 1965 as well, uh, U.S. actor George Murphy began his term as Senator of California. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Then, uh, going to move back up to Brados here, and I believe in 1966. Yeah, here we go. Oh, oh in 1966, all U.S. cigarette packs have to carry caution. Cigarette smoking may be hazardous to your health. Yes. Thank you. I remember that well. Or better quoted warning, the government thinks you're too stupid to realize that sucking in a bunch of smoke that makes you cough is actually not good for you. And then they got real serious a few years later and said, instead of saying maybe, it put is. down, it is. Ooh, now they've scared everybody. Yeah. Well. Yep, and then people still smoke it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody cares. Here, here, didn't stop them. Here in Germany, we have different labels on the cigarette boxes. So when you're suicidal, uh, you will just buy the, the one that says cigarette smoking is deadly. Huh. Oh. You got another one in 66. Uh, oh, this guy with ah. this massive throne. In the year 1966, military coup by Colonel J- Jean Bedel Bocosa. B- Bocasa. In Central African Republic leads to its to his dictatorship. Yep. Yeah. And here he and is his... being crowned Emperor of Central Africa atop a golden throne in 1976. So ten years later, that is elaborate. What a goober! I know. Yeah. Right? 
we, we talked about his coronation on uh, apparently already the 4th of December. And uh, yeah, that cost $3 million, and uh, which was more than a third of the country's budget in 1977. Yeah, I remember talking about that. A third of the entire country's economy uh, you know, f was spent on his coronation as emperor. Yeah. You want to talk oh, about hey, there's outrageous. A... Yeah. So. Oh, there's oh, there's two big ones. This 67 is a big one as well. Uh, oh, okay. Well, do you want to take uh, you want to take those two here? Oh uh, yeah, sure. In the year 1966, Simon and Garfunkel's "Sound of Sounds of Silence" reaches number one on the Billboard Hot 100. And uh, that's a good song. It really great is. Great song. Yeah. Why they listed it, but great song. Yeah. Well, this is uh, to, to give an example of the sound of silence. This is it. No, no. Sounds Sounds of Silence is the studio album, and Sound of Silence is the song. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Here's the sound of silence. Oh. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Just air. <laughs> ah, in 1967, AFL Championship, War Memorial Stadium in Buffalo, Kansas City Queefs beat the Buffalo Bills, 31 to seven. Quarterback Len Dawson passes for two touchdowns. Uh, that's it, really? Yeah, that's nothing. Only two, and then running back Mike Garrett runs for two touchdowns. Ooh, great SC player, Mike Garrett. Kind of funny for what you called them, despite them completely trampling Buffalo Bills yeah. in that game. But <laughs> yeah, that was also back when Buffalo wasn't much good. Now Buffalo is like the is. In the AFC, the team to beat. Mm -hmm. hmm. I can't in the last few years, Buffalo was always in the doghouse. <laughs> I can't even remember being. Oh yeah, they still are. They're still the top dogs. No, the now AFC. They are, yeah. No, he's talking yeah. like in the doghouse oh. isn't bad. Yeah. Bad, yeah. Hey. Oh, I just seen Denver just got their got their uh, stuff together. They oh. almost beat the Chiefs again. They lost by really? three points. Wow. Yeah, they got it together. They booted Hackett. And now they're actually playing really good. Now my boy Ross is cooking. Huh? Nice. They just started too late. Yeah. Danger, Ru Danger not, Russ. Danger Russ. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs, are they? I don't think so. Oh no, they're yeah, they're not in. Not even close. Now they they play the Chargers next week, and that's and then the end of the season is inevitable. I think they'll beat the Chargers with the way they played against the Chiefs. I think they can beat the Chargers. Well, There's no are, reason uh, they don't. Fastly, fastly approaching our second hour on the show. We're still in 1970, so we got to start getting our hustle oh, yeah. on. Sure. So. Okay, yep, sounds good. Uh, in Mr. Blum. the year. Oh, sorry. In 1970, we have the Epoch, uh, quote unquote. It is time zero for Unix Systems Midnight GMT. Huh. So uh, that's Midnight GMT at uh, the 1st of January 1970. Nice. Hmm. The, the oh. Epoch! Yeah, that's where uh, they start counting the time, the those systems. Yeah. In 1971, uh, cigarette ad... I cannot stop. Cigarette <laughs> advertisements are banned on TV. Yeah, remember that too. And that's really cool because I remember like a, many years ago you had that CD of all like the old like 1950s, 1960s yeah. commercials. Yeah. And then there's one for Winston with the Flintstones, you know, and they're yeah. advertising. So it's like, what the hell? Comic like, strip with a guy smoking, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, the Flintstones. Yeah. And then I can't remember what was for the band first off TV, the cigarettes or alcohol. Alcohol still you know, advertised on TV. Not hard alcohol. Yeah. No, it's Vodka, just the light stuff. Know, spirits, it's just maybe you can't, uh, maybe you can't drink it. You don't want to be yeah, you can't show up being drunk, but you can yeah, still. I like, will yeah. say, NASCAR still has beer sponsors in the sport. Yeah, no, he's talking about actual like, TV advertising. Or, I mean, commercials. yeah. Like, yeah, no, they also, like, yeah, they also do commercials. Yeah. No, I say, they don't run uh, very many, but they have. Yeah. No, alcohol's not banned. Drinking alcohol is showing that, yeah, you know, that, I right. believe that's not allowed, but there are, Same. you know, advertisements for alcohol is still allowed. So. I think it was 2017 where Bud Light was the most commercialized beer. They, because they were spamming it. They're like they were just nonstop Bud Light commercials there for the Super Bowl. Yeah, they yeah. like they were just making so many. The whole yeah. the dilly dilly thing. Yeah. yeah, for legal reasons, we have to say don't drink before you drive in the NASCAR. Yeah. yeah. 
Eh, that's NASCAR. That rule doesn't apply to them. <laughs> in, in, <laughs> in 1972, uh, Bert Bacharach, however you pronounce him, you and it. Hal David Spitzigl... What? You nailed it. Oh, okay. And Hal David's musical Promises, Promises, based on the 1960 Billy Wilder film The Apartment, closes at Schubert Theatre, New York City after 1,281 performances, winning Grammy and two Tony Awards. Damn, that's a lot of performances. Holy crap, bro. Jeez. Uh, and Uno Mas, Mr. Blood? All right, as you wish. Uh, in 1973, um, West African... Uh, one moment. West African Economic Community formed. It included Benin, Ivory Coast, Mali, Mauritania, Niger, Senegal, and Upper Volta. Nice. So I never heard of that. We're starting to, like, unionize, but... like, you know, or, like, you know, unite. So we saw that new country here? No, no, it's it's like a UN type thing. Oh, okay. Like okay. the Western, uh, the West African Economic ah, Community. Oh, okay. okay. So, oh so, yeah, Up Upper Volta now is Burkina Faso. Huh. All right. One year later, in 1974, we have the Australian Open's men's tennis. Uh, U.S. Uh, citizen Jimmy Connors won his only Australian title, defeated home favorite Phil Dent seven six six to four, four to six, six to three. You, um, forget, you forgot to give us a blindy. Well, I was just gonna do that. I was just getting to that, mate. I mean, I was gonna say, look at his crikey. face going crikey. Bloom an onion, my friend. <laughs> onions. Onions. I'm a but, god dang onion mason. I'm a mason onion. <laughs> but in the 1970s, well, onion. Lee McPhail took over as AL president of American League, succeeding Joe Cronin. That's a lot bad <laughs> Mc, name, McPhail. McPhail. Like, Mc, McFall? I don't know. Like, I wouldn't McPhail. Like that. Uh, we also McPail. have in 1974, NBC Radio began on the hour news 24 hours a day following CBS lead. And you're talking about that with uh, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Ted Turner? Yeah. And calling him a madman. What are you doing 24 yeah, hour crazy. news? Are you insane? You gotta go bro. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Oh, here we go. Here's a grumpy looking guy uh, for Bredos. Although you're. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's a grump. He's a real grump. Yep. Grumpy Wumpus Moo. Ah, 1975, H.R. Alt-E-Man, Ehrlichman, Mitchell, and Martian convicted of, of a Watergate crimes. Watergate. Yep. Watergate. Yeah. H.R. Haldeman being uh, the Dixon's White House chief of staff, and he resigned from the position uh, during the things, but and he was uh, convicted, so, you know, yeah. yeah it's pretty much useless. <laughs> it's pretty much pointless. Ooh. Circles are pointless. After 45 years in the year 1976 of coaching, yeah. Paul Brown, who's the former, he was the coach of the Cleveland Browns and the Cincinnati Bengals, announces his retirement from the National Football League. He coached forever, well, 45 years, yeah. And I will say, the Bengals hold the record for the fastest rebuild in history. And last year was, was the fastest rebuild ever. Huh. Dang. Yep. Then Blob gets to talk about the Liberty Bell. Right. Ah. In 1976, Fine. the Liberty Bell moves to, uh, his, uh, to its new home across the street from Independence Hall in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Ah. So, all right. So, it's uh, stored somewhere else. Eh? All so right. It's at the, the, uh, the bicentennial. Yes. Uh, yeah, 200 years. Yeah. Okay. And uh, here we it, go. In 1977, the first woman was formally ordained as an Episcopal priest. It was Jacqueline Means. That's cool. Or Mia. I don't know. So first first female priest for that. Episcopalian. Yeah. Yes. And also in 1977, Czech intellects begin the Human Rights Group Chapter 77. Huh. And... Uh, Chapter 77, after the fall of the um, Soviet Union, or uh, no, after the dissolution of Czechoslovakia, uh, oh. they mostly became uh, very influential people. Okay, 
So this is like it says here, uh, Charter 77 criticized the government for failing to implement the human rights provisions of a number of documents it had signed, including the 1960 Constitution of Czechoslovakia, the final act of the 1975 Conference on Security and Cooperation in Europe, Basket 3 of the Helsinki Accords, and uh, the United uh, the 1966 uh, United uh, where is it here? Um, well, that's oh well. Uh, 1966 something. Um, I'll post a link to this in the underbar here. And yeah, the Velvet Revolution in 1989. Uh, many of the members of the initiative played important roles in Czech and Slovak politics. Hmm. Uh, we have an AFC Championship one year later in 1978. Uh, Mile High Stadium in Denver. The Denver Broncos defeated the Oakland Raiders 20 to 17. That's a tight game. Broncos right country. <laughs> Yes, sir. That has to be uh, when the uh, front line of the uh, Denver Broncos was called the Orange Crush. Huh. Oh, yeah. Best O-line. It's one of the best O-line. Not the best O-line, but one of the best ever. The Rams had a great one, too. Fearsome, fearsome. Mm -hmm. Quite a bit earlier. Than so did the... Uh, then there was the Vikings. So did the people eaters. They were great, I've heard too. And so did the, the Dolphins, which was an unnamed one. They yeah, didn't have a name for right. the, for oh, the undefeated one. Right. Yep, yep, yep. Forgot it about was, them. It was one of the ones that flew under the radar, hmm. despite being the only one that never lost a game. Yeah, I remember that season. Yeah. Yep, the old 20 and 0 really team. Wanted to lose too. <laughs> 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 happen. Well, speaking of losing, uh, kind of dark here, we have uh, 213 people lost their lives at the same time as this was happening, the sports thing, uh, when in, uh, Air India B 747 exploded near Bombay. Dang. So sorry yeah. to drag the moon down, but uh, yeah. That's rough. Yeah. Oh, there's yeah. there was another NFC thing. If you scroll. Uh, oh, I there was that. one. Oh, oh, yeah, that's okay. Uh, we yeah, had okay. 19. You want huh? to take this, Bredos? Yeah, I'll take it real quick. Go for it. Yeah, in, in 1978, the NFC Championship at Texas Stadium, Irving, Dallas Cowboys beat the Minnesota Vikings 23-6. Ouch. Oh wait, that was oh that was building up to the the Cowboys Broncos Super Bowl. Uh -huh. Yeah, that was building up to the one where Denver lost, but mm -hmm. by record we still own them because we have a nine and five record against the Cowboys. And the last time we played them, we put up we put up we just put them through a thrashing. <laughs> Are you trying to put a spin on a loss? Is that what you're doing? No, I'm just saying. No, no, I'm just stating the <laughs> truth. We like we. <laughs> With we had a cruddy offense and we managed to put up thirty points against them. <laughs> and they have a good defense, I will say they have a very good defense. Huh. And anywho, I'll, I'll be back in a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna do the split here. Oh, split here. Be, yeah, that's what I want. Welcome to part three. Uh, we are gonna move on up here to 1980. The comic strip The Far Side by Gary Larson debuted in the San Francisco Chronicle, and I, I really enjoyed that comic. It was really oh, cool. I would have thought it was older than that. No, apparently not. Yeah. So, huh. well, it debut. Well, yeah, no debut is when it started. So, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, far, you comic, know what? Well, as a comic strip. Well, yeah. I guess uh, so. When was the Far Side created? Uh, the Far Side uh, launch date December thirty first, nineteen seventy nine. So nineteen eighty, January first. So comic strip is when yeah. it got its debut in nineteen eighty. Yeah, that was just later. yesterday. No, 79, 1980. Oh, I thought it was 76. Okay, no, yeah. I said, Same time. Uh, launch date, December 31st, 1979. Okay. So, then the next day it was, yeah. so that's when they launched it, yeah. then they published it, printed yeah. it, so. Uh, but then uh, we also, uh, let's move on to Blob. That was, uh, I think I did my three, so uh, let's see here. What do we have here? 1983, maybe? Nope, we have an 81. 81, yes. Uh, Peruvian novelist Mario Vargas Llosa publishes the, uh, his historical novel, The War of the End of the World. That sounds ominous. Oh. Yes. In 1982, Peru's uh, uh, Javier Perez de Cuellar becomes the f fifth Secretary General of the United Nations. Oh. All right. And on the same day in 1982, Pope John Paul II prays for an end to martial law in Poland. Ah, he was Polish. Yeah, well, that was when it was under the USSR yes. at the time. Yeah, of course, so. yeah. He was 
he was Karol Wojtyla from Poland before he became uh, Pope John Paul II. Yep. We also have in 1983, TCP slash IP protocols became the only approved protocol on the ARPANET, replacing the early NPC protocol. The ARPANET being, of course, the predecessor to the World Wide Web, I believe, the Internet. So... Uh, yeah, the U.S. Yes. Advanced Research Project Agency Network, ARPANET, was the first public packed switch computer network. It was first used in 1969 and finally dismissed, uh, decommissioned in 1989. ARPANET's main use was for academic and research purposes. Yes, so this was the pre predecessor of the Internet. So, okay. yeah. We're back to 69, yeah. was it? Yeah. Well, and we also have in 1985... Uh, the first British mobile phone call was made by Ernie Weiss to uh, Vodafone. So, British uh, mobile phone. Look at that. Yeah. Can you hear me now? The Verizon <laughs> guy who switched to uh, AT&T or something. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Then going back to Blob. Um, ooh, talked about the internet a little bit more here. Blob? In 1985, the internet's domain name system is created. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's what you're saying, yeah. Uh, well, what is the domain name system? Uh, that's for the actual, like, URLs, right? Like, not the www, which stands for yeah. World Wide Web, and then the .com, yeah. which, I don't know, commercial? If, if, you, if you enter any arbitrary um, signs into your browser bar, uh, it will um, send you to the correct uh, IP uh, yeah. and uh, configuration. It says here the domain name system is a, a hierarchical and distributed naming system for computers, services, and other resources in the internet or other internet protocol networks. It associates various information with domain names assigned to each of the associated entities. So, yeah. It's essentially the telephone book of the in, uh, internet. Like, yeah, that's a good way to put it. If you, if you enter uh, www.onthisday.com, uh, that's not a valid uh, address to go to, so it looks up where that should actually go to, and then it uh, sends you there. Yeah. Like the like the IP address, and you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. But hey, we were talking uh, about uh, automobile laws a couple uh, a couple hours ago. Uh, well, about an hour or so ago. But... Yes. And we have in 1985 also the United States first mandatory seatbelt law goes into effect in uh, New York. Yep. That was back when they only had belt laps. Yeah. Like you, know, you remember when they made that switch? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. You wow. were uh, you were uh, ten years old. No, nine. What are you talking about? Eighty-five. Oh, eighty-five. No, never. I, that's New York. They were in California. Way before yeah. That. yeah. Well, so I, I for some reason I thought fifty-five. So you were in your thirties or something. Yeah. Yeah. But they were, the laws were in California way before that, I know that. Well, I guess this is a mandatory, though. Like, the mandatory oh. laws were yeah. in California. In, these are state laws. Oh. Uh, yes, that's what I said. All right, anyway, we have some music history here in 1986. U.S. singer Barbara Streisand and hairdresser slash film producer John Peters' romantic relationship ended. Oh, Okay. Why, why do we care? Why is it highlighted? No why do we care? I have no clue. No. Uh, I'm going to take this one here. 1986, Aruba, Bahama, oh yeah, pretty ma, became independent from the neighbor island of Curaco. So cool. I had no idea. There you it's go. Curacao. Aruba became independent. Yeah. It, it, it is Curacao, not Curaco. Oh, Curacao, sorry. Uh, but then in 1987, over or 60 bodies were dis were recovered in Dupont Plaza Hotel fire in Puerto Rico. We were talking about that's that hotel good. fire not too long ago. Yeah. 60 bodies recovered. That's yeah. not good. No, not good at all. But and then uh, 1989, the first Hoffman Cup tennis in Perth or in Perth, Helena Sukova and Miloslav Mekif. The one inaugural event for Czechoslovakia, defeating Australian pair Hena Vatilova and Pat Cash, 6-2, 6-4, for a 2 to done victory. Nice. Perth is in England, right? Uh, Perth, no, I think it's in uh, New Australia. South Wales, Australia. Okay. Where is Perth? So, let's see here. Uh, yeah, New South Wales, okay. Western Australia. Or, yeah. Good, good pull. Yeah, no, well, Western Australia, not New South Wales, sorry. That's a different province. I think. I don't know. Um, anyway, back to uh, Mr. Blob here in 1990. 
All right, in 1990, we again have the Hopman Cup in tennis, the, probably the second one then in Perth. Aranta, no, Arantxa Sanchez Vicario beats uh, American Pam Shriver 6-3, 6-3 to clinch a uh, 2-1 win for Spain's first title. All right, go Spain. In 1990, Mitsuko Nishiwaki beats Nakana uh, beats Nakano to become the Japan Women Wrestling Champ. Cool. Huh. Didn't know women and in 1990, uh, what what do you try to say? Oh, you said you didn't know women ever wrestled. Um, yeah, of course they yeah. did. That's why I added this. Or... Uh... Well, I mean, as far as legit professionally, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, well, yeah. well, yeah. I don't see why not. Oh. No, well, they do now. Yeah. yeah. Well, apparently they have since the nineties. And. Uh, probably earlier, who knows? Yeah. In 1991, a 5% sales tax on consumer goods and services goes into the effect in the United Socialist Soviet Republics, USSR. Yep. And uh, that sounds like capitalism to me. So. Funny how it creeps in, huh? Yeah. <laughs> We also have in 1991, Iraq rejected peace proposal from Egyptian President Hosseini Mubarak. Mubarak. E. Mubarak, sorry. Mubarak. I can't pronounce it even when I'm corrected. Oh. Uh, but we also have in uh, 1992, uh, Boutros, Boutros Ghali of Egypt began his term as the sixth secretary general of the United Nations. All right. And we also have in 1992, uh, the Russian Soviet Federal Federative Socialist Republic is renamed the Russian Federation, becoming the successor, the successor states to the Soviet Union. So... Uh, essentially year. 70 years. So what? Essentially 70 years, because in uh, yeah. 1922 uh, oh. they were officially formed. You know, even yeah, though you know yeah, they did yeah. that, they did they started in oh. 1917, but they were officially formed in 1922. Yeah. And then 1992, no. 70 years later, they're done. Oh. So they were formed in 1923. Oh, 23. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Years today. No. Uh, yeah. Well. Yeah. 70 years today. So yeah, that would make it them 69 years old when they collapse. Yeah. Yeah, and that was one year the collapse after the sales tax went into effect. Yeah, yeah, the cigarette uh, advertisements were banned in New York City's MTA, so uh, Metro, I think. MTA. Uh, yeah. 1994. Yeah. Mayhaps. Anyway, um, let's see. Here. I think MTA metropolitan area. Uh, let's see here. New York's MTA. Uh, MTA. Subway. So, yeah. So, whatever. Yeah. Uh, oh, Mass Transit Authority. Yeah. Okay, so no more cigarette advertisements in, uh, in subway cars and such. Yeah. All right. Okay. And now that uh, Brados is back, if he wants, uh, we have one in 1994. Uh, yeah, here we go. In the year 1994, Howard Stern's New Year's Eve beauty pageant. Ah, okay. uh, Howie. <laughs> Howie. <laughs> Ooh, I know about this one. Ah, in 1990, also in 94, North American Free Trade Agreement, or the NAFTA, goes into effect. Yeah, NAFTA. Yeah. NAFTA. NAFTA. Yeah, so that encompasses uh, Canada and Mexico, is no, primarily. Yes. yes. North American free trade, trading freely between the three major nations and all of the other ones. Yeah, you know that Trump redid the deal. Yeah. Yeah. Also, then, also in. Huh? Oh, I was just uh, I'm trying to find uh, this '99 here. Uh, the Euro. Here we go. Ah, in the year 1999, one ninety-nine. The euro currency is introduced. Nice. Yep, and that and that applied for the entire European Union. Oh, that's oh, that, 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 used. My, that was definitely uh, the British pound at the time. They didn't join yep. initially. Yeah, it was. What they initially they didn't join. What was up, Bob? Uh, that was definitely not nice that a euro currency was introduced. Yeah, it got rid of the Deutschmark, it got rid of the franc, it got rid of uh, the Italian, whatever they did. But so. they're trying to compete more on a worldwide scale like the U.S. Yeah. You know, just size yeah yeah oh. and basically just I mean, europe's I mean, version of the dollar yeah. but speaking of money uh, blob gets to talk about uh, some more euro stuff here uh, yes 
uh, where? Uh, 2002. Hello. 2002, yes. Euro banknotes and coins become legal tender in 12 uh, of the European Union's member states. Oh, all right. Including Germany. Yep. As you were saying, so. Yeah. In 2004, in a vote of confidence, Pakistan General Pervez Musharraf wins 658 out of 1,170 votes in the Electoral College and is, quote, deemed to be elected, unquote, as president according to Pakistan's constitution, Article 41.8. Yeah, Article 41, Section 8. Uh, but you missed another 2002 one here in the open skies. You're ringing. Yes, the, the Open Skies Mutual Surveillance Treaty, uh, initially signed in 1992, officially comes into force. And what is that? That sounds uh, pretty ominous there. Uh, the treaty is designed to enhance mutual understanding and confidence by giving all participants, regardless of size, a direct role in gathering pardon me, information about military forces and activities of concern to them. It entered into force on January 1st, 2002, as we just said, and currently has 34 party states, so it is an ongoing thing. So, for further reading on the subject matter, and I know we have uh, kind of uh, screwed the pooch, so to speak, uh, with providing links for further things, because there's been a lot of things we've been looking up throughout these past two hours. Uh, but please refer to the underbar of the description below. Um, anyway, we shall continue on into 2007. Uh, Adam Air Flight uh, 574 disappeared over Indonesia with 102 people on board. So just zip gone. That's not good. So. Uh, we also have 2009. 61 people died in a nightclub fire in Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, that's very not good. So, and there's a lot of jokes I can make there, but I refuse to uh, for the safety yeah. of the show. <laughs> so. Thailand. That's the only one I'm going to make. <laughs> but we also have a 2010 suicide car bomb detonated at a volleyball tournament in Laki Marat, Pakistan, killing 105 and injuring another 100 people. Dang. Well, that's well, that's not very nice. Yeah. Well, that's very mean. That is not cool. That's not casual. What a, them. Yeah, what a, what a doo-doo head. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Let's uh, move on up Many. into... Um, Mr. Brados, it's your turn again. Ah, in the year 2013, Magnus Carlsen breaks Gary Kasparov's chess FIDE rating, reaching 2,861. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's the ELO rating of the International Chess Federation. That's the FIDE FIDE. The Federation International Chess Eject. The Fied. Hmm. <laughs> in the year 2013 as well, Phil Taylor claims his 16th and last PDC World Darts Championship title with a 7-4 victory over Dutchman Michael, Michael Van Gerwen in the final in London. Uh, gr great guy. I mean, Michael Van Gerwen. He... Uh... He's a... Uh, he's a personality. You know, if, if you see him... Uh... Once you will recognize him always. Yeah, well, speaking so of kinda uh, like the... Michael Van Gerwen, we're, you're going to talk about him one oh. more time. Interesting. In the year 2014, Dutchman Michael Van Gerwen min wins his first PDC World Darts Championship, beating Peter Wright of Scotland. 7 to 4, first time no Englishman in the final. Nice. Sweet. Yes. Mr. Blob. All right. In 2016, Dubai skyscraper, the address burns as the new year is rung in. The fire started on the 31st. Oh, that's not a good way to enter the year, but jeez. Yeah. Burning for a year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, bad joke to make, God. but that's pretty much what happened. <laughs> you are such Kratos. You are, you are am... being a dad joke man right now. In 2017, uh, go ahead. Sorry. All right. In 2017, Portuguese politician and diplomat Antonio Guterres becomes the United Nations Secretary General, re uh, replacing South Korean Ban Ki Moon. Ah. Yeah. 
So the ban on the United Nations was lifted. Yay! And <laughs> yes, in 2018, uh, 16 time World Darts champion Phil Taylor loses 7 2 to fellow Englishman Rob Cross in the final of his last World Championship in London. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, I'm going to take this one here. In 2018, California became the largest U.S. state to legalize cannabis for recreational use. Hey, hey. even though I do it medicinally, but uh, still, yeah. <laughs> California. California. Sorry, I had to uh, jump in there, uh, Mr. Blob. Uh, so go ahead, take this other 2018 if you don't mind. Yes. Uh... Iranian's President Hassan Rouhani says recent unrest, uh, quote, is nothing, unquote, after 30 people killed in five days of anti-government demonstrations. The recent unrest is nothing. It is nothing. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's just the same thing again. They had it twice. Apparently the World Darts Championship. That okay. guy has a very well-kept beard. Yeah, that is a really good beard. No. He did. He looks, took really good care of that. It's very fluffy. So, kind of makes you want you want to pet it, right? But like you know, you, the president of Iran. <laughs> oh you know, you don't want to pet the president state. of Iran. Sounds cool. Only yeah, yeah, no. the additional info there is that it was held in the Alexandra Palace in London. More Rose Bowl. Uh, yeah, uh, 2019, the 105th Rose Bowl, number five Ohio State defeated number nine Washington, 20 to 23. That's close. Most valuable players is Dwayne Haskins, quarterback of Ohio State, and Brendan White. Uh, S. Oh, what's S? Regarding to Dwayne Haskins, R.I.P. Dude, he died in a not very good way. It wasn't pleasant. He was he ran across the highway like a like a bonehead. I'm not I'm not trying to say that he was a bad dude. I'm not saying that he was. He, he was running him. across the highway for something, and a dump truck came out of nowhere and hit him. Oh man! Like it was it was yeah it was rough. Well, that sucks. Yeah, and the thing is, he was the future of the Steelers. He was supposed to be the future quarterback for the Steelers. That's unfortunate. Yeah. 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 Uh, but this other guy, Brendan White, S Ohio State. What is S? He's uh, safety. Okay. Yep, that's safety. Yeah. Safety. So Stay on safety. <laughs> um, what are you going to say, Blob? If you uh, send him to a bank, is he a safety deposit? Oh my god. Oh my god. What are you dude, doing, no. trying to get your quarterback? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, they thought, hey, your mama's so stupid. She thought quarterback was a refund. <laughs> well, that makes me look at the Buffalo Bills in a whole new way. <laughs> we also have in 2019, Dutchman Michael Van Gerwen, talking about him again, wins his third PDC World Darts Championship, defeating Englishman Michael Smith 7-3 at the Alexandria Palace in London. All right. Uh, 2019, uh, Jair Bolsonaro began his four-year term as president of Brazil. Four-year, oh, nice, okay. And then uh, I'm going to take this last 2019, and uh, Bredos can uh, bring this up. Uh, actually, no, there's another 29. So, uh, Bredos, go ahead and start your turn here. Alrighty, in 2019, level at 1-1 one to one in the Hopman Cut, in the Hopman Cup tennis tie, Roger Federer in Serena Williams combined 43 major singles titles matchup in deciding mixed doubles with teammate Belinda Benson Benkick Federer Rin wins 4 to 2 4 to 3 for 2 to 1 Swiss victory over the US uh -huh. mm. and 2019 here we go Qatar and also in the in also in 2019, Qatar introduces a 100% tax on alcohol and other health damaging goods, doubling the price of alcohol, tobacco, energy drinks, and pork in the oil rich, predominantly Muslim nation. Well, that explains why you're asking that weird question earlier before the show blob. It's just like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, also in Qatar. Of 2019, also also in 2019 in Qatar, they withdrew. They have withdrawn from the organization of petroleum exporting countries, 
OPEC after 57 years of membership. Oh man, OPEC. <laughs> Dang, that's that's a that's a woof. So. Oh hey, there's another uh, there's another Rose Bowl. Oh. Yeah, actually, there's two more. There's two more Rose Bowls. <laughs> well, let's not talk about every Rose Bowl. I, we're actually. Uh, <laughs> I don't think we're going to be doing Burst and Destiny. I'd like to uh, end it here pretty soon here. So, <laughs> yeah. In the show, that is. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but Mr. Blob, uh, go for it, 2020. I'll take the last four. In 2020, Scotland's Peter Wright beats Dutch defending champion Michael van Gerwen 7-3 with 102.79 uh, no, average. 30 times 140s uh, and 11 maximums, that's 180s. And 53% on doubles to seal his first PDC World Preview, uh, World Darts Championship in London. All right. Uh, in 2022, the Chicago Bulls forward DeMar DeRozan becomes the first player in NBA history to hit buzzer beaters on consecutive days. He hit Three pointers to beat Washington Wizards 120 to 119, and the previous night the Indiana Pacers with 108 to 106. Wow, both were really close. So. And in, and also in 2022 we have huge news: the first episode of the Omni Coalition's This Day in History show. Yeah, yeah, in 2022. Well, like yeah. not the very first one, but the first uh, the first one on our attempt to do like an entire year long year round one. But uh, you have another one here in 2022 at that same time. Oh, before you did the show, I thought it was the very first episode. No. Oh. No, the very first episode was like, I don't know, back in between 2010 and 2015 when the show was a, its own thing, I think. Even before that, I don't know. Been a long time. Oh. Yeah, where they were like six, minutes, six to ten minute episodes. <laughs> Like the, in, the OG episodes. In 2022, we have a state funeral in Cape Town, South Africa, for anti-apartheid leader Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Rest in peace, Tutu. Oh. And in the year 6000, we Whoa. will have the first reversible date since 11 11 1999. Wow! So I lived through uh, the previous one. That's pretty cool. Wow, I'm I, I, I'm one of the six thousand. I don't know, whatever. So anyway, one one six thousand. Yep. Anyway, as I mentioned before, we are not going to be going into bursts and deaths. We've been going on for over two hours here, and it's uh, it's probably going to be like ten or so o'clock at night before this is actually going to be fully uploaded. Uh, so uh, I do advise you to go check out the bursts of the deaths. Links to these will be in the underbar in the description below. Uh, anyway, that shall conclude the show. Once again, as I said, you can check the underbar in the description below for any links that you will find interesting, including but not limited to all things Omni Coalition. And I'm just going to double check to see. Yep, I am caught up with my links. Uh, this is done. Anyway, for your dose of Advanced Events Daily, we stream every day at two at, at, at ten in the morning Pacific time. Uh, we were a little late today because it is New Year's, and we did a ten-hour live stream yesterday and a whole bunch of stuff. It's been a wild weekend. Anyway. Uh, so it is uh, 10 o'clock in the morning Pacific time, 11 uh, Mountain, 12 Central. And 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. As well uh, as? Is 7 p.m. German time. Yep. Which, as we discovered yesterday during the show, uh, most of Europe is in the same time zone. And time zone is weird, that one. Anyway, for all of you and all of us, I am Xander. I am the Slayer. And I am Protoblob. And uh, you are you. And until you catch us tomorrow, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection, rate five thumbs, and subscribe. Toodles! Toodles! Toodles.